Good evening, I'm Melissa Pena, and I just wanted to welcome you to Fandango 2020, Masquerade de Oro. We're so excited that you're going on this adventure with us tonight, and I want to take a moment to give you a little information about what's going to happen. The silent auction, golden buckets, and luck of the draw are all available right now through that personal bid pal link that was sent via text to your phone. If you have issues with any of that, please call us at 383-6911 and we can walk you through how to bid or we can resend that link to you. And we really miss meeting in person this year. So we would love to be a part of what you're doing at home, your gatherings at home. So if you would please email Pam any photos that you take throughout the night of your guest uh, and you having dinner, sitting around bidding, anything at all um, to Pam's email at pmorales at mosthistory.org. We would really appreciate that. We're gonna put that all together and keep that, maybe show some throughout the night. And I just wanna take a moment right now to thank everyone who has been a part of this, who is making Fandango 2020 a success. Um, and we wanna especially thank our premium tables uh, hosts. We've been so fortunate to have such a strong network of people who support us. So thank you to all of you. Have a wonderful evening and happy bidding. We were here before the lines were drawn. We were Indians. And vaqueros. We became soldiers. Ranchers. entrepreneurs. We started families and formed the land. We are South Texas. This is our history. Discover your story at the Museum of South Texas History. privilege to run their own uh, cattle, but they had to work with the uh, communities to do that. And they had the little church, they had the little school here. They, they had everything, you know, just uh, everybody would come from as far away as five, ten miles. Some would even stay with their family here, with, uh, with our family, which was, uh, they were the settlers here. And it's a lot of this has been in the family since uh, 
Grant, the Spanish Grant. I'll probably go back to Gregorio Vela through through my ancestry. And you're talking about maybe four or five generations. Yeah. It's just uh, amazing what's here. It needs to be re redone, re remodeled, and put back to where people 100 years from now see what people used to do 100 years back or 200 years back. The only reason this is in the shape it's in is because it's being kept with a brush around it so people cannot climb and, and get in here and tear into it. Otherwise, it would be in real bad shape, but I would say it's 90% from what it used to be when it was first built. And it don't take a whole lot to restore and fix what's here. I wouldn't want to change what's there. Keep, keep, let it look like it is right now. Even the color, I would even hate to change the color on it. Just repair whatever we have. To. And anybody has ideas or, you know, or know somebody and we can work with. I want to thank you guys and everybody at the museum and everybody for being so interested in what's still left of uh, what we have. The Museum of South Texas History is so lucky to have a family like Raul Villarreal and to open their gate to us to see some of the earliest livestock watering facilities in the state of Texas, right here in San Isidro, Texas. These were probably built preceding the issuing of the land grant of Santa Teresa. And to make an application for the Spanish land grant, you had to prove that your land was capable of sustaining livestock. What you see here is water well system, not just a dug well. You'd see the water trough, and that was fed by a pila, a water storage tank. And if you look farther to the south, there's another wall, and the water trough on that wall is on the south side. That would total about 140 feet of watering space for livestock. And the storage tank was to have water during the rush hour. You see the dug well that has since collapsed and it folded inward and exposing the ciatis, the carved caliche rock that these old structures were made out of. And you see the, the pila, the storage tank, but what you don't see is the tinaja, that's all of these structures had the tinaja. The tinaja was a naturally formed hole in the caliche rock that they would chip out and use as a basin to pour the bucket of water into so it wouldn't erode the masonry. Looking down into the tinaja, which in turn would run the water down through a little aquifer that was covered, making it a tube into the water storage tank. At the distance you'll see that the family has put barriers around so people wouldn't fall in the water well. It's an active water well, it's a dug well, a noria de cubo, and it was used to fill the water troughs as well. I'm Jim McAllen. Hope you enjoyed this story.
Hi, my name is Annette from the Museum of South Texas History, and today we're going to talk about some of the prehistoric creatures that once lived in South Texas and North Mexico. Let's travel back 75 million years ago. That's a really big number. So that means this was a very, very long time ago. A long time ago before humans like you and me were on the Earth. This was a time of the dinosaurs. Do you think there were any dinosaurs in the Rio Grande Valley? Let's take a look at a map that might give us some clues. This map shows what the state of Texas looked like 75 million years ago. If you look for the Rio Grande Valley, where our museum is, you will see it covered by blue. The blue color shows where the ocean was. That means that the Rio Grande Valley was underwater. Where you live may have been part of the ocean floor. Dinosaurs lived on land, so this map tells us that there were not dinosaurs living in the Rio Grande Valley. There may not have been dinosaurs living in the Rio Grande Valley, but there were a lot of animals under the sea. One of them was a giant sea reptile, like the one that's right here above my head. In the museum's gallery, you can see a mosasaur skeleton. Maybe you've seen the movie Jurassic World that features a really big mosasaur. These creatures grew to be up to 60 feet long. That's as long as a whole bowling lane. Think about that the next time you're aiming for a strike. Where would we find mosasaurs today? There are none living today, which means that mosasaurs went extinct. To find them, you would have to dig about five miles below the ground to unearth their skeletons. Some of their relatives or their great, 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 great grandchildren are still living today like monitor lizards. That's pretty great. Animals are not the only fossils you'll find underground in South Texas and North Mexico. If you dig really far underground, you may find some plant fossils too. When you think of the valley, what's a tree that you see a lot of? I know my mind always goes straight to palm trees. Ancient or really old palm trees have been preserved over millions of years through a process called petrification. That's kind of what happened to this ancient tree. That's why sometimes when people are really scared, they say they're petrified, meaning they become really stiff or can't move like a rock. Let's take a look at these pieces of wood. Here I have a piece that was just chopped off a living tree. And over here, I have a piece of petrified wood that's been under the ground for millions of years. Which one do you think is heavier? This one's bigger, this one's smaller, Let's go to the scales to find out. From our results, you can see that the petrified wood weighs a lot more. That's because over a long, long time, the wood becomes filled with minerals and turns into a stone. That's why this one is really heavy. Let's fast forward a few million years to the Pleistocene Epoch. This was the Ice Age. It was called the Ice Age because temperatures across the world were a lot colder than they are today. Some of the animals that lived in the Ice Age are mastodons and Colombian mammoths. These were the great great grandparents of the elephants that we know today. Since it was so cold, these animals had lots of fur on their body to help keep warm. We have a Colombian mammoth skeleton at the museum, and a mammoth like this could grow to be up to 15 feet tall. That's three times as tall as I am. They also ate about 500 pounds of vegetables a day. That's a lot of salad. Mammoth bones have been found in ranches and cities in Texas and North Mexico. The bones we have are from the Los Llanitos Ranch near Reynosa. We also have some tusks 
found near China, Nuevo León, and even a tooth that was found in Sinton, Texas. Thank you for learning about fossils with me today. Come in and see these fossils for yourself next time you visit the museum. Hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Kelly Francis Love, the archivist at the Museum of South Texas History. Welcome to another video about the unique objects and stories in our collection. The Lower Rio Grande Valley has an ecosystem that is unique, unlike anywhere else in the United States. This subtropical environment is host to a wide variety of animals and plants. Today, we are going to talk about some of the more elusive animals in our area, the big cats. Historically, there have been five types of big cats found in the valley the ocelot, the bobcat, the mountain lion, the jaguar, and the jaguarundi. The jaguarundi is a small cat, sometimes referred to as the otter cat, due to its long slender body and short round ears. They are slightly larger than your average house cat. The last confirmed sighting of a jaguarundi was in Brownsville in 1986. However, there has been talk of reintroducing them to their once native habitat. The jaguar is another big cat that has not been seen in a long time. As this newspaper article describes, this photo is of the, a jaguar killed on a ranch in San Benito in 1946. It was shot by Reynaldo Ramirez on San Jose Ranch where it had been killing young calves. Though Mr. Ramirez had no way of knowing it at the time, this was the last documented jaguar in the valley. Mountain lions are still regular visitors to the valley found at Laguna Atas Costa National Wildlife Refuge and throughout South Texas brushland. In 2018, one was found wandering through a neighborhood in Laredo. It was tranquilized and released back into the wild. Usually mountain lions do not enter heavily populated areas. However, this neighborhood was close to the natural environment found along the river. As humans encroach on the big cat's habitat, interactions between humans and wildlife are bound to become more frequent. Bobcats are the most prevalent of the big cats in South Texas. Again, they do not usually interact with humans, but here at the museum we had our own close encounter in February of 2007. On a Sunday, a man entered the museum's store and asked a staff member if a particular item was meant to be on display. The staff member looked up to see where he was pointing to see a live bobcat pacing along bookshelves. The museum was closed to protect the public Two animal control officers, along with local rancher Jim McAllen, captured the animal and relocated it to McAllen's ranch. It may have been an escaped pet, as it is unlikely that a wild bobcat would venture indoors or remain so calm around people. The final species of wildcat found in our area is the ocelot. Ocelots are considered an endangered species, but have found a haven at Laguna Atas Costa National Wildlife Refuge. There are fewer than 100 ocelots left in the United States, and they are all in South Texas. One of the more rare items in the museum's collection is this ocelot pelt. It was seized by U.S. Fish and Wildlife agent John Sanchez at a border crossing in 2009. According to Sanchez, some experts believe illegal trade in wildlife or animal parts ranks second or third in scope behind traffic in drugs or weapons. Such items are often viewed as status symbols, especially if they are from a rare or endangered species. On a more hopeful note, we have this newspaper article with the late local rancher, Frank Uturia. Mr. Uturia passed away in November of 2018, but left behind a legacy in conserving the valley's natural landscape. In 2017, he was recognized by the Botanical Research Institute of Texas and awarded the International Award of Excellence in Conservation for putting thousands of acres of land into easements to protect endangered ocelots and other wildlife. Some of this land is now part of the Lower Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Refuge, which is a network of protected tracts of land throughout the region that have created a wildlife corridor where these cats can roam free. This wildlife corridor will help preserve wildlife and boost the local economy as ecotourism brings millions of dollars into the area each year. 
Thanks for watching and please join us again online or on site at the Museum of South Texas History. Hi, good evening. It's me again, Melissa Benya here at the museum, and we're welcoming you again to our um, Fandango Masquerade de Oro 2020. We're so excited that you're joining us and you're, we're seeing the bidding go up and I'm a little upset because somebody keeps outbidding me on the Consuela clutch and I understand it's like I really want it. So I have my phone here with me and I'm about to bid again. Um, if you're having issues bidding, go ahead and call us here at 383-6911. And we have some people, some staff standing by and they can walk you through it or we can resend a link to your personal uh, bid pal. So don't let that be your issue. Um, and we're so happy that you guys are gathering together with small groups, social distancing, but we miss you. So please send us photos to Pam's uh, email Pam is P Morales at mosthistory.org so that we can see what's going on in everybody's houses and just enjoy this time with you guys. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, once again, thank you so much to uh, all of you for, for stepping in and stepping up and going on this adventure with us. And it's been just really interesting and it's fun and hopefully it'll just continue to be successful. So happy bidding and we'll see you guys soon. Hello everyone, my name is Leanne and I am from the Museum of South Texas History. Today we are going to go over an archaeologist toolkit. Now you may be wondering, what does an archaeologist do? Archaeologists look for clues to help rediscover the stories of how people lived in the past. Archaeologists study the past by looking at the artifacts which ancient civilizations have left behind. Artifacts tell us how people lived a long time ago. Items like pottery and arrowheads can tell us what they ate and how they hunted for food. So, how do archaeologists find these artifacts? Archaeologists work in teams and go on excavations, also called digs, in order to find and protect artifacts from being destroyed. These discoveries can then be studied, documented, and then shared with the world. Today, we're going to go through the tools inside an archaeologist's backpack. These items you see today are just a few of the real-life tools an archaeologist will use out in the field. Our first item is the trowel. A trowel is a digging tool used in excavations. It is the main tool an archaeologist will use to dig. Small motions are used to not harm a buried artifact. Next, we have our brushes. These are used to brush dirt away from the artifact, and it helps uncover the artifact safely. Now, I know this sounds strange, but chopsticks or wooden skewers can be used to pick dirt away from delicate artifacts, such as bones, but this can take a while, so it's important to have patience and be gentle. Moving on to your field notebook, this item is very important because you can take notes on the details of your dig, like the weather, the color of the soil, or what artifacts you hope to find that day. When you find something, you can also draw it and anything else around you. These notes come in handy later when you work in a lab, where you will analyze the details of an artifact. Measuring tapes 
are important to archaeologists because they need to take notes on everything they find and where they found it. You measure the artifact and take notes on its size and shape and color, and any other special markings or characteristics. Make sure to write it down in your field notebook. A compass is used to tell which way you are facing, north, east, south, or west. It is used to point north in photos of your dig. Taking photos of the object is another way to show where you found the object and how it was placed in the soil. Sample bags, foil, tissue are used to store and protect artifacts from the field to the lab. Bags are marked with the location, date, and description of the artifact inside. The foil and tissue are for artifacts that can be easily broken such as bones or delicate pottery. Here are some other important items to remember. Digging for artifacts can be exciting, but it is also hard work. Always bring a water bottle with you, especially in hot environments. It keeps you hydrated and healthy. Taking breaks and having a snack every so often helps keep your energy up throughout the long work day. Clipboards help keep your paperwork and notes organized. Any metal or plastic one is fine. We have this one that is storage area, which can help keep your items clean and dry. Work gloves protect your hands from getting too sore and can help you from getting too many blisters. Out in the field, you should always try to be prepared for anything, so having a raincoat with you can be handy since you could be in an area where it may rain a lot. Keeping a hat, some sunscreen, and a pair of sunglasses in your bag are handy also because they will protect you from the sun and help you not get sunburned. Now that you know everything you need, take a look around your own house and see how many items you can find for your own archaeology toolkit. You might already have some of the items you need for your own discoveries. Thank you for joining me. Happy digging! The original name of the ranch was Buena Vista, but it later became known as Laguna Seca. Legend has it that at one time there was a watering hole along an old Indian trail. In time, all that was left was a large, dry, sunken area, a dry lake. It was to this site that in 1867, Macedonio brought his family in a wagon train from El Tule. By then there were five children. Ramon, Jesus Maria, Macedonio II, Carlota, and Delfina. My name is Carola Chapa Vela. Uh, I'm from San Manuel, which is 18 miles north of Edinburgh. Family ranch that has been within our family for, oh, probably seven generations. Manuel Chapa was my great great grandfather, and that's who the ranch is named after. And so we have deep roots here in the valley. And then prior to that, uh, my family came from Reynosa and the Camargo area. And they were there since the mid 1700s. So I always tell people, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. <laughs> Two more children were born to Macedonia and Mercedes, Eloisa and Alberto. The ranch became a community with its own church, schoolhouse, and post office. Macedonio built a school in 1892 and brought teachers to the ranch. In 1893, the Oblate Fathers came from Brownsville to establish a church that served the surrounding ranches of El Desierto, La Noria Cardenena, Santa Anita, and others. And it was determined by the committee members that we wanted to approach the museum and ask if they would allow us to set up a family exhibit, which they did. We acquired clothing, artifacts, documents, pictures. On the wall, we had all the branches of the family and we used the orange tree as the theme. And the first orange trees in the valley were 
planted there at the Laguna Seca Ranch, and then there's a historical marker. And they got the orange seeds, you know, back then they had traveling priests, and he brought, uh, some of the priests brought oranges to the children, and they, my aunt, Tia Carlota Adela, it said, planted the first orange trees as a child. We all have wonderful, rich family stories to say. Some are funny, some are sad. The, the thing is this, have you documented it? Is it in some format so that future generations can see where they're from and what their stories are? And I think that's what this museum is doing. It's, it's documenting the history of the region, but so much of the history of this region is really family history. It goes back to the ranches and the pioneer families that came here and settled and developed all this region. Hello, my name is Melissa Pena and I'm the archival assistant at the Museum of South Texas History. Because we're in the middle of hurricane season, we wanted to present some of our materials we have on Hurricane Beulah, a devastating storm that hit September 1967. Hurricane trackers are used to track storms coming into the United States. The photographs we have show the devastating flooding that happened on both sides of the border. Our collection also contains reports and charts generated through the study of hurricanes and the damage they do, as well as souvenir editions of local newspapers and a commemorative photo album. A special item found in the archives is a phonographic record album called Beulah y las Crescientes. It contains day-by-day -day reports of the hurricane as it passes through the lower Rio Grande Valley and several corridos, or story songs, about the hurricane and the damage it caused. The artists featured on the album include Los Calibanes de Mario Sainz y Wally Gonzalez and Freddy Gomez y sus Dinamicos. Es la mañana del martes 19 de septiembre de 1967. El cielo está tremendamente nublado. La temperatura es un poco más caliente de lo normal. Uno de los fundadores de Hueslaco dijo, No nos han dado tiempo ni de espantarnos. Viula nos dejó más que asustados. Hay lugares en que el agua ha tapado completamente casas y negocios como en la ciudad de Harlingen, donde solamente tres pies de la parte alta de una casa era visible. Viola 
pero todos la sentimos y a Dios pedimos que me pero estas cosas las manda la divina providencia. I'm Leanne from the Museum of South Texas History, and today we are going to explore stratigraphy, or the different layers of dirt. You may be asking yourself, what is stratigraphy and who uses it? Stratigraphy is the study of the different layers of dirt, or strata, and the order they are found. If you've ever seen a mountain, a canyon, or a cliff, you may have noticed some lines across the rock wall. These lines show all different layers, it kind of looks like a slice of cake or a pudding cup treat. Did you know layers of dirt can preserve things like fossils and artifacts? To preserve something means to keep it safe from being damaged or broken down. That's why we find artifacts and fossils today that have been preserved over hundreds and thousands of years. Stratigraphy is used by scientists like archaeologists and geologists to figure out how old the things they find in the ground are. Archaeologists explore layers of dirt from when our ancestors were around. Our ancestors, or people from the past, left behind clues that help archaeologists learn more about how they lived. These clues can be things like food, pottery, or arrowheads. Geologists and paleontologists, or rock and dinosaur scientists, look at fossils and rock layers, and these are in the lower or deeper levels of dirt. These are the things you will need in order to follow along and make your own dirt cup. Pudding, today we're going to be using chocolate pudding, assorted gummies, including dinosaur gummies, bottle gummies, and gummy worms, cookies, and we're going to crush these into crumbs, whipped cream to top it all off, a rolling pin, this will help you crush the cookies, a plastic bag, a clear cup, and a spoon. Let's take a closer look at how our pudding cup was made so we can see which layers come first. Our first layer is the cookie crumbs. This is also our oldest layer. Here you can place a dinosaur gummy. This represents a dinosaur fossil. These dinosaurs existed millions and millions of years ago. Now add your layer of chocolate pudding on top of this. Here the cookie crumbs look different from the pudding. This layer of pudding is younger than the cookie crumb layer below. When you need to know which one is older, ask yourself, which one got there first? The layer below will always be older than the layer above because over time, dirt gets stacked on top of each other. Whichever was there first stays at the bottom. Now let's add another layer of crumbs and a bottle-shaped gummy. This represents pottery or artifacts like the ones archaeologists might find. Notice that the more layers of dirt that are added, the more compressed or flat the dirt becomes below. Artifacts or animals are found in the layers from the time they were made or existed. Repeat another layer of pudding, and when you reach the top of your cup, add some whipped cream and gummy worms. These are like the grass and the worms that you find on top, and they are the present day or youngest layers. Now that you learned how stratigraphy can give you a glimpse into the past, you can now enjoy your delicious dirt cup. Thank you for joining me today, and make sure to tune into our other videos. We were here before the lines were drawn. We were Indians and vaqueros.
we became soldiers. Ranchers. Entrepreneurs. We started families and farmed the land. We are South Texas. This is our history. Discover your story at the Museum of South Texas History. privilege to run their own uh, cattle, but they had to work with the community to do that. And they had the little church, they had the little school here. They, they had everything, you know, just uh, everybody would come from as far away as five, ten miles. Some would even stay with their family here, with, uh, with our family, which was, uh, they were the settlers here. And it's a lot of this has been in the family since the grant, the Spanish grant. I'll probably go back to Gregorio Vela through, through my ancestry. And you're talking about maybe four or five generations. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, amazing what's here. It needs to be re redone, re remodeled. And put back to where people 100 years from now see what people used to do 100 years back or 200 years back. The only reason this is in the shape it's in is because it's being kept with a brush around it so people cannot climb and, and get in here and tear into it. Otherwise it would be in real bad shape but I would say it's 90% from what it used to be when it was first built. And it don't take a whole lot to restore and fix what's here. I wouldn't want to change what's there. Keep, keep, let it look like it is right now. Even the color, I would even hate to change the color on it. Just repair whatever we have. To. And anybody has ideas or, you know, or know somebody and we can work with. I want to thank you guys and everybody, the museum and everybody for being so interested in what's still left of uh, what we have. The Museum of South Texas History is so lucky to have a family like Raul Villarreal and to open their gate to us to see some of the earliest livestock watering facilities in the state of Texas, right here in San Isidro, Texas. These were probably built preceding the issuing of the land grant of Santa Teresa. And to make an application for the Spanish land grant, you had to prove that your land was capable of sustaining livestock. What you see here is water well system, not just a dug well. You'd see the water trough, and that was fed by a a water storage tank. And if you look farther to the south, there's another wall, and the water trough on that wall is on the south side. That would total about 140 feet of watering space for livestock. And the storage tank was to have water during the rush hour. You see the dug well that has since collapsed and it folded inward 
and exposing the ciares, the carved caliche rock that these old structures were made out of. And you see the, the pila, the storage tank, but what you don't see is the tinaja. That's all of these structures had the tinaja. The tinaja was a naturally formed hole in the caliche rock that they would chip out and use as a basin to pour the bucket of water into so it wouldn't erode the masonry. Looking down into the tinaja, which in turn would run the water down through a little aquifer that was covered, making it a tube into the water storage tank. At the distance you'll see that the family has put barriers around so people wouldn't fall in the water well. It's an active water well, it's a dug well, a noria de cubo, and it was used to fill the water troughs as well. I'm Jim McAllen, hope you enjoyed this story. Hi guys, it's me again, Melissa, here at Fandango 2020, uh, Masquerade de Oro. And we hope you're having a great night so far. We're watching the bidding going on and it's been really great. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to your desserts yet, but let me tell you if you haven't, I just finished some of mine and it was so good. So we wanna just take a moment hopefully i mean we're seeing the bidding happening so uh and we haven't been getting a lot of phone calls so hopefully everyone has their link and bidding is working great for you if not call us here at 383-6911 and we have staff sitting by waiting to answer your questions um we are going to have luck of the draw um the golden bucket and the silent auction open for uh, about another hour and then those will close because our live auction is going to happen at 8.30. That's when it's going to start. So be ready for that. Maybe that's when you need to pull out your desserts and the wine bottles that we sent. Um, and also, don't forget, please don't forget to send us some photos to Pam's email. And it's pmorales at mosthistory.org because we really want to share that with you guys. We want to see what's going on at your little social distancing gatherings and... You know, thank you so much. Again, thank you so much to everyone who has been out there supporting us and bidding and buying tickets and picking up your dinners. And it's just been so great to see this support from everyone. Thank you to our premium tables. Um, we're just, we're feeling it. We're feeling the love tonight. So enjoy and happy bidding. The premium brush stretched for miles. The land was open but rugged. The perfect landscape for wild cattle. This uninhabited land was granted to Jose Manuel Gomez in 1790 and was named Santa Anita. Its remote southeastern corner was known for its dry lake, or Laguna Seca. In 1867, Gomez's great-granddaughter, Salome Bailly, and her husband, John McCallum, sold approximately 4,400 acres from the southeastern portion of Santa Anita to Macedonio Vela. Vela, who eventually expanded his land ownership to 80,000 acres, established the Buena Vista Ranch, but later named it Laguna Seca. 
He and his family raised horses, mules, and cattle. Water came from hand-dug wells, and the buckets of water were poured into long watering troughs. Cattle herds would drink from the troughs during the hot, dry days. Come forward 200 years, you will find smaller ranches with newer houses. Yet the crumbling stone buildings and water wells remain to recall Laguna Seca's long heritage. The South Texas ranching tradition lives on. I'm Kelly Francis Love. Welcome to another video about the unique objects and stories in the Museum of South Texas History. Today's story is a story of love. The love a young woman had for animals and the love her future husband had for her. In February 1951, the Morgan Horse Magazine featured an advertisement for a contest. The contest was for entrants under 21 years old. All they had to do to enter was write a story about Morgan horses. The goal was for the magazine to obtain more personal stories to be published in future issues. Five winners would be chosen from five different parts of the country, and the prize would be a Morgan Colt. In Donna, Texas, 14-year-old Rosemary Tutts Washburn, the daughter of Mayor Dale Washburn, decided to enter the contest. Tutts wrote her essay about how she had always loved horses, but Morgan's held a special place in her heart. A total of 217 entries were received from the West Central Zone, and Tuts was chosen as the winner. In December of 1951, Tuts traveled to Kansas to pick up her new horse from the donor, Loctis. She was told that she could have her pick of colts, and she chose a young female. She decided to name her new horse Lachlan, after the donor Locke and the young filly's mother, Texas Lynn. Her winning essay, as well as her story of traveling to pick up her horse, were published in the January 1952 issue of the Morgan Horse magazine. Tuts loved her new horse, and they spent five years together. But in 1957, she made the tough decision to sell Lachlan to help pay for college. She first contacted Loctis to see if he would be interested in taking the horse back, but by that time he had gotten out of the horse breeding business. Eventually, Lachlan was able to find a new home in Houston with a woman named Maxine Merchant. Miss Merchant went on to become the president of the Texas Morgan Club, and in her hands, Lachlan became a champion show horse. As for Tuts, she proceeded to graduate from college and marry Don Curl, but she never forgot her Morgan. In the 1970s, her husband decided to see if he could track down her old horse. At some point, Lachlan had been sold to a woman in California, which is where Don found her. The owner in California had been thinking of putting her down due to her age, but agreed to return the horse to the curls instead. Lachlan lived another year and a half in, with the curls in the South Texas sunshine. And that's the story of how a young horse lover won the horse of her dreams and was reunited with her nearly 20 years later thanks to her husband, who just wanted to make his wife happy. Thanks for watching. Join us again online or on site at the Museum of South Texas History. Hi, my name is Julia and I'm at the Museum of South Texas History. Today, I'm going to be talking about the history of maíz tortillas. Maíz or corn was grown by one of the oldest civilizations in the Americas, the Aztecs, who were known as great farmers and grew plenty of corn for everyone to eat. Their descendants still live today, and their customs and language, now what, still influence Mexican culture. For example, the Aztecs would eat a small round piece of corn flatbread called Tlaxcali. When Spanish explorers first saw Tlaxcali, they decided to call them tortillas after the word torta, which means cake. So the tortillas we all love were known as small cakes. 
It is likely that corn was brought to South Texas through trade and migrations of families over time. Now, let's see how tortillas would have been made back when Texas was Mexico. To make tortillas, we need to prepare the maíz into a masa or dough. The first step is called nixamization. In Nahuatl, nexli means ashes and tamalí is the dough. Ization is the process of something being made. Nixamalization is the process used to soften and make the maíz more nutritious. This affects the taste, smell, and color of the masa used for making corn tortillas. First, we need to soak and cook the corn with a mix of lime and water. You can get this lime from a tree though. This lime powder comes from seashells or limestone and is known as cal, which means calcium oxide. The outer layer of the kernel is called the hole. When the hole is softened and removed through nixtamalization, it's easier to grind the corn on the metate. The metate is a stone tool used to grind food into powder form. There's two parts to it. The stone slab is known as the metate, while the smaller stone is known as the mano. I use the mano to grind the corn into a powder. Once the powder is made, we mix it with water and knead it into masa. Now we can begin shaping our tortillas. A tortilla press is a useful tool for this step. It's time to get the fire started in the horno or the oven. We heat the tortillas on a hot comal, which is like a flat pan. Once the tortillas are done, they'll begin to rise. And from there, it's a quick trip to the dinner table. Tortillas have been enjoyed for years and are still seen eaten with many Mexican dishes today. Have you ever seen anyone make a tortilla from scratch? How does your family make tortillas? Thank you for watching Summer Nights at the Museum. Follow us on social media and watch other fun videos on our website at mosthistory.org. Once, millions of longhorn cattle roamed South Texas. Then, new cattle breeds and feed yards took over. 
Today, despite these changes, one thing remains relatively the same. The boot. Over 100 years ago, Mexican Texan vaqueros taught newcomers about cattle methods and gear, which included the boot. By the late 1800s, the modern world began shaping a new South Texas. Towns grew with new stores, offices, and courthouses. Into the 21st century, South Texas became a metro-like area with shopping malls, restaurants, and entertainment. However, sheriffs and city police still maintain law and order, especially with a pair of custom-made boots. Well, in 2001, when we uh, opened the shop, uh, we were focusing mainly on your traditional cowboy boot. Uh, and through a good friend of ours that we got introduced into the law enforcement circuit, they like to have their badges, their seals, their, you know, their spe the, whatever field they specialized at, uh, embroidered on their boots. So that's kind of uh, what we gear for. 90% of our boots are geared towards law enforcement. We're very proud to serve them and to be able to offer them a good quality product at a price that they can afford. And, and all these are, we cater to a lot of the sheriffs, a lot of the troopers, and this is for you know, a customer that works for the Attorney General and the Baxter County. Uh, of course, we make a lot of boots. We have a lot of customers all over the U.S. So this is, we just shipped out to Illinois. This is a, a uh, family-owned business, and we, we do it all. I take care of the, you know, the making of the boot, measuring, cutting, and all that. And my wife takes care of the paperwork when she gets from her job over there, you know, and she gets in here running, and she goes through the desk over there and starts... And doing all her paperwork, so that's what we do. That's how we do it here. One of the most famous bootmakers in South Texas is Rios of Mercedes. This family owned business was established by Zeferino Rios, a native of Mexico, and later bought by the Evans family. Boot company is owned by the Rios family, and uh, they started down in General Terran in. 1853, but they came up here to the states, and they've been boots have been made here in the states right after the turn of the century, so about 1910. So it's probably been 108, nine years. So the only two sons that branched out. One Don Seferino Rios came here to Mercedes, and the other one Don Navran Rios went to Raymondsville. And at the time, there was like a Rios of Raymondsville and a Rios of Mercedes. Uh, when we got in the business, my uncle was the uh, it was owned by a group of investors that bought it from Don Zeferino in 69. And four years later, I came to work. My, they hired my uncle. I had graduated from school down in Mexico City and was dying to get a business started in Mexico. And, and he said, well, if you want to start one up, uh, you can do the subcontract of fancy stitching because it's very tedious work. And within about two or three years, we were making enough money. We bought Rios, my uncle and I did. And so it's uh, been a family business ever since. Sewing boots by hand is still a time-honored custom with many of the bootmakers in South Texas. Moran Boots, located off of Expressway 83 in Weslaco, is also a family-owned and operated business with family members making the custom order boots. Custom made is, is a boot that you're not going to find out there that you're kind of designing yourself. You decide what color you want the top, what color you want the bottom, what kind of sole, what kind of heel. And usually also are more popular is for custom is people that have difficulty with their feet because sometimes we all tend to have one foot bigger than the other. So the custom made allows you to build a boot that fits you and it doesn't look odd. It looks like if it was just fitted for you. Boots aren't just worn for everyday ranch life, but also to make a statement with a nice dress outfit. The fashion of the boot has changed over the years. First generation bootmaker Olegari Mundujano Sr., my father, uh, started making boots in 1984. He started making boots here in Westlaco in 1995 and 
boots have changed dramatically. Uh, I started with my dad in 1980, started making Python uh, snip toe boots, and that was rocking the 80s. In 95, the demand for ropers and cowboy boots uh, skyrocketed. You know, everybody wanted their standard classic boot. Ten forward, ten years later, double stitch came in, in, in play. Everybody cared for Western designs, colored color tops, initials. You know, it was more casual. And us as boot makers, we can't stay. We can't stay. Uh, we have to keep moving with fashion. And customers that walk in and you know uh, never wore a pair of boots because they have issues with their feet. You know, wide insteps. Uh, you name it. That's the type of projects we like to do and work with. They're wearing shorts and sandals. They come and stop by and trying them on for the first time. They're excited. You can see their excitement in their eyes. For them to just don't care and walk out in shorts and wear their boots, that's what, that's what keeps us moving forward and keep pushing our techniques, techniques and quality, uh, improving each day. Each day you learn a new thing. Whatever need you have for a pair of boots, you can always find a boot maker to help you design and custom make your order. Hi, I'm Melissa with the Museum of South Texas History. Today we're going to learn about a plant that is very important to South Texas and Northeastern Mexico, cotton. Have you ever taken a road trip and seen snowy white fields in the middle of summer? Those fields are full of cotton, ready for harvesting. To harvest cotton, farmers pick the bowl from the plant. The bowl is the round, fluffy clumps where cotton fibers grow. It's very dirty and full of seeds, so someone has to clean the cotton before it can be used. Some cotton growers in the early United States used enslaved peoples for free labor. Many from the continent of Africa were forced to pick, clean, and pack cotton with no pay for their work. All this hard work was done by hand until the cotton gin was introduced to the United States. A cotton gin is used to clean dirty cotton so it can be made into thread and fabric. The word gin is short for engine. Some gins were even cranked by gas-powered motors. The gins in the United States were definitely not the first in history. There are records of machines used to clean cotton as far back as the year 400 in India. The most famous American cotton gin inventor was Eli Whitney. In the early 1800s, Whitney patented a machine used to clean a shorter type of cotton plant. The cotton gin helped growers because now they could process even more cotton than ever before. More cotton in the U.S. meant that less had to be brought in from other countries or imported. There was so much cotton made in the United States that growers could sell the extra to other countries or export it. This made the growers so much money that they demanded more enslaved people to work for them for free. How would you feel if you had to work for free? Cotton was king and this caused a huge problem because people felt slavery was very wrong and that all people should be free. These two groups of people did not agree on many things, including slavery, and this caused a civil war. A civil war is a fight that divides a country. The North, called the Union, referred to the United States of America, and Southern states were the Confederate States of America. But 
But what did cotton have to do with the valley during the Civil War? The money the Confederacy made from exporting cotton was used to trade for food and weapons for the Confederate Army. Shipping cotton on boats was an important way to make money from buyers in Europe. The Union had a bigger navy and blocked the ports with battleships. This was called a naval blockade, and it kept the South from exporting cotton through seaports, like Brownsville. Both the Union and Confederacy wanted to control Brownsville because it was so important as a port city. In fact, the last battle of the Civil War was fought at Palmito Ranch a month after the Confederacy surrendered. Here on the borderlands, traders did find a way to export cotton on steamboats through the Rio Grande. The bottom part of a ship is called the hull. The steamboat's hull is flat, and that means it can float up and down rivers like the Rio Grande. Cotton was brought by wagon carts. With the flat hull, steamboats can slide onto sandy riverbanks on the Mexican or Texas side. Then whole bales of cotton were strapped to the sides of steamboats. During the Civil War, about 20% of the Confederacy cotton was transported down the Rio Grande and shipped out of Matamoros and Baghdad in Mexico. Since the ships leaving Baghdad flew the Mexican flag, they could get past the blockade. This was known as the back door of the Confederacy. There are so many ways we use cotton in our everyday lives. Can you think of ways you use cotton? Thank you for watching Summer Nights at the Museum. Follow us on social media and look out for other fun videos on our website, mosthistory.org. This is Joe Fox. The song is called Coronavirus Conjunto. Here we go. In the year 2020, the valley got the corona flu. To H-E-B, everyone was running. Off the shelves, the toilet paper flew. The kids stayed home and the schools were all empty. In South Padre, the party ended too. From Wuhan, it traveled across the ocean. Now it's making everybody blue. When will this end? Nobody knows. It all depends and it's going way too slow a friend and tell them that you love them though you'll stay again and hope tomorrow is a day this all will end some people said none of this existed others said that the world was all through we all stocked up on lying soul and germex while talking heads argued on the primetime news. The days went on and we tired of counting, but for the sick and our loved ones too. Six feet apart and keeping our distance, no more high fives, only elbow taps will do. So will this end? Nobody knows. It all depends, and it's going way too slow. So phone a friend, and tell them that you love them, though you're staying in. And hope tomorrow is the day this all will end. There you go. Hi, my name is Melissa Pena. I'm the Archival Assistant at the Museum of South Texas History. Welcome to another video of some of our unique stories and objects we have in our collections and archives. Today I'm going to talk about 
Don Pedro Jaramillo, a curandero, faith healer, and folk saint in the Rio Grande Valley region. Jaramillo was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico in 1829. Brooks County Historical Survey Committee compiled a brief history of Jaramillo's life on Los Olmos Ranch, where his story as a curandero begins in 1881. Prior to his move to the ranch, Jaramillo injured his nose with a tree limb while riding through the brush. The pain was so intense he bathed it in mud out of desperation. Because of the relief, he repeated this treatment for three days and his injury was healed. During this time, Jaramillo believes he heard the voice of God tell him that he will be used to heal people. Don Pedro is widely loved and respected because of his generosity and his services as a healer. Many times he would purchase and distribute food to the people in his area, especially during some of the heavy droughts. People would come from far and wide to see him for his services and some were as far away as New York. He traveled all around this region to the different ranches, seeing different people who couldn't make it out to Los Olmos Ranch. But while he was away, people seeking his service would camp out in front of his house and wait for him. And many times he would leave food and provisions behind for these people because he knew that they were going to be waiting for him. They appreciated that his prescriptions were simple. He utilized the number three and the number nine in a lot of them. And sometimes it was as as simple as drink three glasses of water or eat nine cubes of sugar. And all of this was done while praying. Although Don Pedro Jaramillo died in 1907, his image continued to be used to identify and sell herbal remedies. Here we have a few boxes with his image and name on them. Each box contains a different herbal remedy. These were not packaged or sold by Jaramillo, but because he was a folk saint of healing, it was a very important part of taking any form of medication. This bottle boasts its ability to cure an array of ailments. It loosely translates to seven oils of Grandfather Pedrito, the seven oils from the seven healing herbs of Grandfather Pedrito. This mixture is used by rubbing or massaging into skin where there is swelling, a sprain, old bruises, asthma, chest colds, and chronic snoring. Warm it up and apply to the chest and throat. We also have this small crypt statue that was found at the Relampago Ranch Cemetery in Hidalgo County at the Thaddeus M. Rhodes Cemetery. It is nine inches tall and four inches wide. He is weathered and damaged, but his eyes are still bright. Continuing to tell the story of Don Pedro Jaramillo and the traditions of curanderos and faith healers through our artifacts is an important part of keeping our cultural heritage alive. Thanks for watching and please join us on site or online at the Museum of South Texas History. I'm Melissa with the Museum of South Texas History, and today we're gonna to talk about churning butter. Have you ever wondered what butter was made of? Butter is a dairy product. That means it's made out of milk. Before making butter, we need heavy cream. What is heavy cream? Heavy cream is fresh milk that has been left out to stand. Over time, cream floats to the top and is separated or skimmed from the surface of the milk. You can scoop the cream out by hand, but if you wanted to make a lot of butter, you would have to use a machine called a mechanical cream separator. This process produces two products, skimmed milk and heavy cream. You can use both of these, nothing ever goes to waste. Once you have your cream, all you have to do is agitate it or shake it to make butter. 
why does shaking the cream work? When you shake the cream around, you're slowly breaking down the fat molecules in it until they start to clump or stick together. And that's what butter is, mostly fat. When you shake the cream, you're creating two products, buttermilk and butter. And again, you can consume both of these. Buttermilk is often used in baking recipes and batters like pancakes or fried chicken. What can you use to shake the cream? There are many different types of churns, but they all have something in common. The typical butter churn has three different parts. The container, where you put the heavy cream, the plunger that agitates the cream, and the lid that keeps the cream from splashing out when you start. This butter churn is a ceramic one. The dasher is made of wood and shaped like a cross to help break up the cream. Typically, we use a towel to wrap around the dasher and lid to keep the cream from making a mess. If you stop halfway when the cream has thickened, you end up with whipped cream. You can tell the butter is separating from the buttermilk because you can hear and feel the separation without peering into the churn. The color of your butter will depend on what the cow was being fed or how much vitamin A they had. Grass-fed cows produce butter that is more yellow in color. Once you had your final product of butter, you can add salt, sugar, or herbs. You would use wooden paddles to shape the bars of butter. These are known as scotch hands or butter pats. You can place the butter in a mold or in a butter press if desired. Here is an ad from a local butter company, Falfurious Butter. The company originally formed in 1909 and they're still around today. If a family happened to make too much butter, they might take their butter to sell or trade at local stores. And sometimes those families had their own unique stamp to mark their products. It was usually the children who were given the task of making the butter as a chore. Do you think you would be able to make butter for hours? If you want to test out your butter churning skills and make your own butter at home, be sure to check out our recipe. Thank you for watching Summer Nights at the Museum. Follow us on social media and watch for other fun videos on our website at mosthistory.org. We were here before the lines were drawn. We were Indians and vaqueros. We became soldiers. Ranchers. Entrepreneurs. We started families and farmed the land. We are South Texas. This is our history. Discover your story at the Museum of South Texas History. Hi, my name is Joe Fox and welcome to the Museum of South Texas History. Did you know that the oldest part of the museum used to be a jail? In fact, it's one of the oldest buildings here in Edinburgh. Let's check it out. Edinburgh is the seat of Hidalgo County. A county seat is like the capital of the county. 
and where the courthouse is. The county seat used to be in the town of Hidalgo, near the Rio Grande. Over a hundred years ago, the citizens of Hidalgo County voted to move the county seat to the new town of Edinburgh. Why, you ask? Well, there was flooding near the river, and there was a new railroad coming through the area. After the county records were moved to Edinburgh, planners and workers started building a new courthouse and jail. The jail was opened in 1910. If you committed a crime in Hidalgo County, you would be locked up in this building. The jailer and his wife, Nemesio and Marcelo Cortina, were known for being very friendly to the families in Edinburgh. One older resident remembered Marcella cooking tortillas for the kids that lived near the jail. Hidalgo County continued to grow. After 1921, the old jail was too small for the county, but the building was used as a city hall where the mayor worked. A fire station, and then a police station. For a while, the jail was empty. There was even a big storm in 1967 named Hurricane Beulah that flooded downtown Edinburgh. Luckily for us, there was a group in Hidalgo County who had the dream of turning this historic jail into a history museum. Students from the Edinburgh High School Key Club even volunteered to clean the roof tiles. The 1910 jail became a Texas historic landmark and opened as the Hidalgo County Historical Museum in 1970. The 1910 jail has been here for over a hundred years in Edinburgh. Today, we're going to make a South Texas sunset out of the jail silhouette or outline. Check out the link in the description to download the activity file, then print the stencil. For this activity, color pastels are gonna work the best because you can draw your sunset and smear the colors together with your fingers. If you don't have color pastels though, Crayons and color pencils will also do fine. With your colors, you can make a changing sky. You can use red, orange, yellow, blue, and purple to make it look like a sunset. Or be creative and make your own design. Next time you see a sunset, pay attention to what colors you see in the sky. Send us a picture of your South Texas sunset so that way we can share it on the museum's Facebook or website. Most importantly though, have fun. Thank you for watching Summer Nights at the Museum. Follow us on social media and watch other fun videos on our website at mosthistory.org. Hi, my name is Lisa Adam, and I'm with the Museum of South Texas History, here to tell you another story about a unique object in our collection. Today, I brought a beautiful mineral specimen. It's pretty amazing, and if you looked at this long enough, you actually might start feeling thirsty, because this is pure salt, almost, or sodium chloride in chemical terms. This is mass of salt crystals that formed at a famous salt lake in the very southern tip of Texas. And this salt lake has so much history to it. And I'm going to start that history by showing you this reproduction or copy of a Spanish colonial map from 1792. Now just to orient you, here's the Gulf of Mexico. And here's the Rio Bravo, also called the Rio Grande. And if we go upriver, you can see that the salt lake is clearly drawn on the map and it's labeled Salina de los Reneros. And that's because the Spanish colonists at the nearby town of Reynosa, the Reneros, were mining and collecting the salt and selling or trading it. You can also see on this map that there are depictions of Native Americans with bows and arrows. And I'm sure that they knew about the Salt Lake because some of their stone points have been found near the lake and they were probably hunting animals that gathered there. This lake eventually became known as La Sal del Rey, and sometimes it's written as El Sal del Rey, as we see it here in this rare book. 
Now, La Salle del Rey was very important to the Spanish crown or king, as symbolized by the crown here, as well as the Spanish colonists for several reasons. For one thing, the settlers in towns like Reynosa, Camargo, and Mier were raising a lot of livestock. And rem remember, this is before refrigeration. So in order to preserve the meat from their animals, they had to have salt to cure it. They would also use salt to tan animal skins into leather, and they could also use salt in a dyeing process to dye fabrics. What's pretty interesting to think about is some of this salt might have been collected and sold or traded very far south into what is now Mexico, because salt was very important uh, to be used in the mining process to refine silver. So for instance, salt from lakes near us might have ended up to refine silver to produce a beautiful plate like this, which dates from the late 1700s or early 1800s in what's now Mexico. This salt from the Salt Lake was very important during the Civil War for the Confederacy, but that's kind of a whole other story. But the salt continued to be collected all the way up until the 1930s. And here from the museum archives, we have some photographs from an old scrapbook that show the Salt Lake. Here are some people that are just relaxing, maybe enjoying a picnic underneath some kind of shelter. Here's a man and a young boy with a rifle and they might have been hunting again some of the birds that gathered at the lake. This is a good picture of the Salt Lake and the white is the salt that's starting to form as water evaporates from the lake. And here's a boy who's just sitting on a big pile of salt. So this salt lake has been important since prehistoric times all the way till today. And I mentioned earlier that a lot of animals, uh, birds would gather at the lake. And today the salt lake is part of the lower Rio Grande Valley Wildlife Refuge. And you can visit there, but if you go, be sure to be careful of nesting birds, not to disturb them. And also be sure to take some water because you might get thirsty looking at all that salt. Thank you for listening to one of our unique stories from the collections of Museum of South Texas History. The original name of the ranch was Buena Vista, but it later became known as Laguna Seca. Legend has it that at one time there was a watering hole along an old Indian trail. In time, all that was left was a large, dry, sunken area, a dry lake. It was to this site that in 1867, Macedonio brought his family in a wagon train from El Tule. By then there were five children, Ramon, Jesus Maria, Macedonio II, Carlota, and Delfina. My name is Carola Chapa Vela. Uh, I'm from San Manuel, which is 18 miles north of Edinburgh. Family ranch that has been with, in our family for, oh, probably seven generations. Manuel Chapa was my great-great-grandfather, and that's who the ranch is named after. And so we have deep roots here in the valley. And then prior to that, uh, my family came from Reynosa, in the Camargo area, and they were there since the mid-1700s. So I always tell people, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. <laughs> Two more children were born to Macedonia and Mercedes, Eloisa and Alberto. The ranch became a community with its own church, schoolhouse, and post office. Macedonio built a school in 1892 and brought teachers to the ranch. In 1893, the Oblate Fathers came from Brownsville to establish a church that served the surrounding ranches of El Desierto, La Noria Cardenena, Santa Anita, and others. And it was determined by the committee members that we wanted to approach the museum and ask if they would allow us to set up a family exhibit, which they did. We acquired clothing, artifacts, documents, pictures, 
uh, on the wall, we had all the branches of the family and we used the orange tree as the theme. And the first orange trees in the valley were planted there at the Laguna Seca Ranch. And then there's a historical marker. And they got the orange seeds, you know, back then they had traveling priests and he brought, uh, some of the priests brought oranges to the children. And they, my aunt, Tia Carlota Vela, it said, planted the first orange trees as a child. We all have wonderful, rich family stories to say. Some are funny, some are sad. The, the thing is this, have you documented it? Is it in some format so that future generations can see where they're from and what their stories are? And I think that's what this museum is doing. It's, it's documenting the history of the region, but so much of the history of this region is really family history. It goes back to the ranches and the pioneer families that came here and settled and developed all this region. We were here before the lines were drawn. We were Indians and vaqueros. We became soldiers. Ranchers. entrepreneurs. We started families and farmed the land. We are South Texas. This is our history. Discover your story at the Museum of South Texas History. Hi, my name is Joe Fox, and welcome to the Museum of South Texas History. Did you know that the oldest part of the museum used to be a jail? In fact, it's one of the oldest buildings here in Edinburgh. Let's check it out. Edinburgh is the seat of Hidalgo County. A county seat is like the capital of the county and where the courthouse is. The county seat used to be in the town of Hidalgo, near the Rio Grande. Over a hundred years ago, the citizens of Hidalgo County voted to move the county seat to the new town of Edinburgh. Why, you ask? Well, there was flooding near the river and there was a new railroad coming through the area. After the county records were moved to Edinburgh, planners and workers started building a new courthouse and jail. The jail was opened in 1910. If you committed a crime in Hidalgo County, you would be locked up in this building the jailer and his wife. Nemesio and Marcelo Cortina were known for being very friendly to the families in Edinburgh. One older resident remembered Marcella cooking tortillas for the kids that lived near the jail. Hidalgo County continued to grow. After 1921, the old jail was too small for the county, but the building was used as a city hall where the mayor worked. A fire station and then a police station. For a while, the jail was empty there was even a big storm in 1967 named Hurricane Beulah that flooded downtown Edinburgh. Luckily for us, there was a group in Hidalgo County who had the dream of turning this historic jail into a history museum. Students from the Edinburgh High School Key Club even volunteered to clean the roof tiles. 
The 1910 jail became a Texas historic landmark and opened as the Hidalgo County Historical Museum in 1970. The 1910 jail has been here for over a hundred years in Edinburgh. Today, we're going to make a South Texas sunset out of the jail silhouette or outline. Check out the link in the description to download the activity file, then print the stencil. For this activity, color pastels are gonna work the best because you can draw your sunset and smear the colors together with your fingers. If you don't have color pastels though, Crayons and color pencils will also do fine. With your colors, you can make a changing sky. You can use red, orange, yellow, blue, and purple to make it look like a sunset. Or be creative and make your own design. Next time you see a sunset, pay attention to what colors you see in the sky. Send us a picture of your South Texas sunset so that way we can share it on the museum's Facebook or website. Most importantly though, have fun. Thank you for watching Summer Nights at the Museum. Follow us on social media and watch other fun videos on our website at mosthistory.org. Hi, my name is Lisa Adam and I'm with the Museum of South Texas History here to tell you another story about a unique object in our collection. Today I brought a beautiful mineral specimen. It's pretty amazing and if you looked at this long enough you actually might start feeling thirsty because this is pure salt almost or sodium chloride in chemical terms. This is mass of salt crystals that formed at a famous salt lake in the very southern tip of Texas. And this salt lake has so much history to it. And I'm going to start that history by showing you this reproduction or copy of a Spanish colonial map from 1792. Now just to orient you, here's the Gulf of Mexico. And here's the Rio Bravo, also called the Rio Grande. And if we go upriver, you can see that the salt lake is clearly drawn on the map and it's labeled Salina de los Reneros. And that's because the Spanish colonists at the nearby town of Reynosa, the Reneros, were mining and collecting the salt and selling or trading it. You can also see on this map that there are depictions of Native Americans with bows and arrows. And I'm sure that they knew about the Salt Lake because some of their stone points have been found near the lake and they were probably hunting animals that gathered there. This lake eventually became known as La Sal del Rey, and sometimes it's written as El Sal del Rey, as we see it here in this rare book. Now, La Sal del Rey was very important to the Spanish crown, or king, as symbolized by the crown here, as well as the Spanish colonists, for several reasons. For one thing, the settlers in towns like Reynosa, Camargo, and Mier were raising a lot of livestock. And rem remember, this is before refrigeration. So in order to preserve the meat from their animals, they had to have salt to cure it. They would also use salt to tan animal skins into leather, and they could also use salt in a dyeing process to dye fabrics. What's pretty interesting to think about is some of this salt might have been collected and sold or traded very far south into what is now Mexico because salt was very important uh, to be used in the mining process to refine silver. So for instance, salt from lakes near us might have ended up to refine silver to produce a beautiful plate like this, which dates from the late 1700s or early 1800s in what's now Mexico. This salt from the Salt Lake was very important during the Civil War for the Confederacy, but that's kind of a whole other story. But the salt continued to be collected all the way up into the 1930s. And here from the museum archives, we have some photographs from an old scrapbook that show the Salt Lake. 
Here are some people that are just relaxing, maybe enjoying a picnic underneath some kind of shelter. Here's a man and a young boy with a rifle, and they might have been hunting, again, some of the birds that gathered at the lake. This is a good picture of the salt lake, and the white is the salt that's starting to form as water evaporates from the lake. And here's a boy who's just sitting on a big pile of salt. So this salt lake has been important since prehistoric times all the way till today. And I mentioned earlier that a lot of animals, uh, birds, would gather at the lake. And today, the salt lake is part of the lower Rio Grande Valley Wildlife Refuge. And you can visit there, but if you go, be sure to be careful of nesting birds, not to disturb them. And also be sure to take some water because you might get thirsty looking at all that salt. Thank you for listening to one of our unique stories from the collections of Museum of South Texas History. The original name of the ranch was Buena Vista, but it later became known as Laguna Seca. Legend has it that at one time there was a watering hole along an old Indian trail. In time, all that was left was a large, dry, sunken area, a dry lake. It was to this site that in 1867, Macedonio brought his family in a wagon train from El Tule. By then there were five children. Ramon, Jesus Maria, Macedonio II, Carlota, and Delfina. My name is Carola Chapa Vela. Uh, I'm from San Manuel, which is 18 miles north of Edinburgh. Family ranch that has been within our family for, oh, probably seven generations. Manuel Chapa was my great-great-grandfather, and that's who the ranch is named after. And so we have deep roots here in the valley. And then prior to that, uh, my family came from Reynosa and the Camargo area. And they were there since the mid 1700s. So I always tell people, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. <laughs> Two more children were born to Macedonia and Mercedes, Eloisa and Alberto. The ranch became a community with its own church, schoolhouse, and post office. Macedonio built a school in 1892 and brought teachers to the ranch. In 1893, the Oblate Fathers came from Brownsville to establish a church that served the surrounding ranches of El Desierto, La Noria Cardenena, Santa Anita, and others. And it was determined by the committee members that we wanted to approach the museum and ask if they would allow us to set up a family exhibit, which they did. We acquired clothing, artifacts, documents, pictures. On the wall, we had all the branches of the family and we used the orange tree as the theme. And the first orange trees in the valley were planted there at the Laguna Seca Ranch, and there's a historical marker. And they got the orange seeds, you know, back then they had traveling priests, and he brought, uh, some of the priests brought oranges to the children, and they, my aunt, Tia Carlota Vela, it said, planted the first orange trees as a child. We all have wonderful, rich family stories to say. Some are funny, some are sad. The, the thing is this, have you documented it? Is it in some format so that future generations can see where they're from and what their stories are? And I think that's what this museum is doing. It's, it's documenting the history of the region, but so much of the history of this region is really family history. It goes back to the ranches and the pioneer families that came here and settled and developed all this region.
Hey guys, we're back. All of the bucket um, and other auctions are closed right now. So we are excited to tell you that the luck of the draw, congratulations to Patrick Moore. How fun is that? And if you got a text from us, that means that you won one of the other items. So look out for that. We've sent those out. Congratulations to all of our winners. Um, and stay tuned. We have some more uh, messages coming towards you. Good evening, my name is Kate Viriel and as this year's Fandango Committee Chairman and on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees for the Museum of South Texas History, we'd like to welcome you to this year's Fandango, Masquerade de Oro. This year, not only do we celebrate our 42nd Fandango, but also the museum's 50th birthday. And although we wish we could be together at the museum celebrating, we're so excited to connect virtually and to not have missed this important event. Because please know, your participation tonight will allow the museum to continue in its mission to preserve and present the history of South Texas in Northeastern Mexico. So without further ado, gather your small group up safely or connect remotely and let's celebrate Fandango virtually. Good evening, I'm Linda Tovar, HB Senior Manager of Public Affairs. On behalf of the team at HEB, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate the Museum of South Texas History on its 50th anniversary of opening its doors in 1970. HEB is proud to be the museum's golden partner in a year-long celebration of this milestone. The museum has grown tremendously and continues to serve our borderland region by preserving and presenting the unique heritage of South Texas in northeastern Mexico. As the museum's first and longest running corporate friend, we are happy to play a supporting role in the museum's history and its future. We hope you will enjoy your golden goodie bag filled with items from HEB throughout this evening of auction fun. And don't forget to bring your golden bag back to one of our stores when you shop for groceries at your HEB. Enjoy Fandango Masquerade de Oro as you party with a purpose to support the preservation and education programs at the Museum of South Texas History. Thank you, HEB, for everything you've done for us this past year. And we just want to uh, introduce Robert McGurk, who is the chairman of the board, and not just the chairman of the board. He is a huge supporter and champion of the museum, and we're so happy that he's with us tonight. Hey everybody, welcome to Fandango Masquerade del Oro. Hope you all are having a great time wherever you are tonight joining this event virtually. Boy, this is weird, right? But boy, kudos to the museum staff for finding a way to put on a very important fundraiser even when we can't see each other in person. Speaking of seeing each other in person, earlier this week I saw someone in person and the next day they tested positive for COVID. And what that means is now I am quarantined and out of an abundance of caution for the staff of the museum and everyone else, I will not be there tonight. Uh, I will not be there in person. I won't even be there live. We're doing this virtually and recording this because um, it's just not a good idea. Uh, I'm symptom free. That's the good thing. I've had no problem. It's just that I was exposed to someone who had COVID. Uh, and so here we are. Um, so with that said, I'm 
terribly disappointed that I can't be there. I had such a good time last year. I always have fun working with our amazing auctioneer, Ross McKenzie, and was looking forward to visiting with Ross and, and Dana uh, tonight and just, just having a fun weekend. But uh, instead, I'll be home watching with everybody else right here and hopefully bidding with everybody else as well. Um, I want to congratulate the museum, though, before we go any farther tonight. You know, the museum is full of amazing history of South Texas, hence the name. But the museum itself has become historical. I mean, 50 years the museum is celebrating that it's been there. And 50 years is a long time. Uh, and that is terrific. So now the museum itself is becoming an historic part of Edinburgh, of Hidalgo County, of Deep South Texas, of the Rio Grande Valley. So congratulations to the museum for that. That's really cool stuff. Uh, again, to Ross McKenzie, I wish I could be there tonight with you, but I'm leaving you in very good hands, Ross. Um, you know, if, if, if I can't be there, uh, I'm excited that the CEO of the Museum of South Texas History is going to jump in and take over as the master of ceremonies. Dr. Francisco Guajardo, y'all know him, y'all love him, and he knows the museum better than anybody else, so he's gonna jump in and take over. So Ross, you're in good hands, and know that I'm gonna be watching from home and bidding and being part of this process because even though I can't be there, uh, I miss everybody, wish I could be there with you, uh, but I'm there in spirit and I'm watching from home. I'll be seeing how y'all do. So good luck, everybody. Bid high, bid often, and now take it away, Francisco. Tim, thank you so much for all you do for the museum and I think for the entire valley. You have been such a godsend to our community. And I just want to, you know, say thank you on behalf of the museum, but also everybody. I mean, you've been really the man, Tim, for so many years. And, you know, you have for a number of years helped us also with, with Fandango and helped so many other people in the valley. So thank you, Tim, so much. We'll miss you here tonight, but I'm going to do my best to to, you know, to, to do the Tim Smith thing here. So I wanna to speak to everybody who's joining us tonight in two different capacities. First, as a chief executive officer of the Museum of South Texas History. And so the first thing that I wanna say is that this is, I believe the 41st year that we've hosted Fandango. And that's important. So I wanna to speak to that a little bit, but first say the museum is celebrating its 50th anniversary. And so before it was open in the spring of 1970, there were a group, there was a group of very committed folks from the community who, who thought that having a museum would be a good idea. And so they, they came together sometime in 1964, and then shortly thereafter developed a charter and then got permission from the state of Texas and then IRS to be a nonprofit organization. And then it opened, the, the museum opened its doors at the, as the Hidalgo County Historical Museum in April of 1970. So we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. So I want to tell you what your money does for us, you know, why it is important for you to invest in the museum and why we are so grateful for your generosity and your commitment to the museum. And so this is what you'll be giving tonight for Fandango. So there are three things that I want to touch on. First of all, you know, I am right now standing in the courtyard gallery at the museum, and I am right in the middle of what used to be an old HEB building. Before it was HEB, it was a Piggly Wiggly supermarket back in the 1930s, and then became an HEB in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and into the 70s. So we are actually housed, the museum is, in a building that's actually pretty old. We do have a new addition. It's a really nice state-of-the-art addition. But this old building requires maintenance. And so there, that, that means money. We also have the 1910 jail, the historic jail, which is where the museum was, you know, opened in 1970. And so we've held on to that building. We've, you know, pumped a lot of money into restoring that old historic building, but it's also a 110 year old building. So that building also requires a different kind of tender loving care. So just from a facilities standpoint, we always need to do maintenance and upkeep and that sort of thing. So your contributions helps us to maintain the property. That's important. Secondly, your contributions will go toward, you know, helping us have a, a top notch team. So we have a team of very talented and very committed staff members. And so, you know, it, when you have good and talented staff members, you need to invest in them not only in, in, in making sure that they can have good quality lives, but also in making sure that they develop. And so there's an investment that's required in that. We're very proud of our team 
And so, you know, thank you for helping us hold on to our team and invest in our team. The third thing is about programming. So I want to speak to a couple of different things with programming. The first one is that, you know, in the year 2020, as everybody knows, of course, we've experienced this tumult, this upheaval, social, cultural, economic upheaval. So for the museum, we have really been forced to get ahead of that. How are we going to adjust, you know, to the time? And so what we've done is that we have moved our programming very significantly to virtual platforms. Now, when we reopen and we re-engage the community like we used to, you know, we, we look forward to being face-to-face -face again with the community. But what we've done in the last six months is that we have really invested in, in moving our work toward a digital platform, virtual platforms. And so I'm happy to report to you that the kind of productivity, we've, productivity, productivity that we've experienced since March has actually been remarkable. For example, our Sunday speaker series that has now gone to a virtual platform. You know, we did one just last Sunday, a, a speaker series event where it was from two to three in the afternoon by, by midnight that night, we had well over 1,700 views of that one talk. We had a talk earlier in the summer that has been seen more than 6,000 times, another talk over 4,000 times. Generally speaking, we get 1,000 to maybe 1,500 views per event. And, and the reason is because it's good quality programming. And so we have that good quality programming because we've invested in moving toward a digital platform. And so we're happy about that because, you know, when we get back to normal, we're going to have really a two pronged approach. Number one, the face to face, you know, and, and we want to go back to that as fully as we possibly can and to marry that with the virtual work. And so we're going to be a different kind of museum when we come out of this pandemic. So we're very happy about that. So your contributions tonight, and we want you to bid, bid as much as you can, bid as much as you can. You know, I have to tell you that at, at what time is it? At 8.34 p.m., we're doing as well already as we did last year. And that's thanks to you. You know, so the pandemic has really not affected the generosity of the community. And so we hope, we thank you for that. Okay, so I'm gonna move from the CEO of the museum to now the MC of tonight. And so Melissa has helped a good amount with that, but I wanna tell you about how this happened. So this event, as you know, doesn't happen without a lot of people participating. And so there are a few people who need to be thanked explicitly. So there is Casey Villarreal. She is the chair of the Fandango Committee. So Casey, thank you so much for all you do. And so Casey has been joined on this committee by Kelly Ortega, who's a terrific board member. All these people are just, you know, fantastic board members. Jennifer Sander, Sony Rigo, Juan Carlos Rendon, Robert McGurk, you know, all these people are part of this committee. And so they've come up big, you know, the, this entire season. So thank you. Thank you so much to the museum staff, you know, because it really can't happen without a committed and talented staff. And then the other thing is that thank you to the community. Thank you to the businesses who have bought, that have bought tables. Uh, thank you to those of you who have bought, you know, your own individual seats for dinner. You know, this, this, is, this is important, this is important. And so thank you for joining us on this fundraising adventure. I wanna say one, one other thing. Our auctioneer, and I'm gonna call him to, to come and introduce himself. The, this fellow, some of you may know him because if you've been to Fandango in the past, this is a familiar you know, face. So Ross McKenzie has been coming to these things for 31 years. So he's got not only a big heart, but also a big commitment to the museum. And so Ross, you know, comes here, you know, and I don't know how old Russ is, right? He looks young, but Russ has been doing auctions since he was 18 years old. So this fellow is from Kennedy, Texas, and he was 13 years old. He tells the story of how when he was 13, he got a Christmas gift of a little cassette recorder. And then he skipped school one day because this guy, this, this big time auctioneer was coming to Kennedy to do an auction and he skipped school to go see the auction. And so he tells the story of how he was following this guy, Bill Miller, you know, as he auctioned off whatever, and he followed him with a tape recorder. This is in 1970. So Ross tells the story of how he still has that cassette. How about that? So Ross, why don't you come up, introduce yourself, and then we'll move into the live auction. Thank you, Francisco. Good evening, everyone. Well, here we are in 2020, and it's a lot different than it was last year. 
But tonight, we hope that uh, y'all will participate with us, as uh, they said a little bit earlier. Um, we've already raised as much money as we did last year at this point in time. So for the next 10 items that we sell to you, I hope that uh, y'all will participate. Uh, I want to thank y'all uh, and appreciate y'all putting everybody together in your homes to keep the social distancing situation as it is. At this time, I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to let you have it. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Ross. So this is package number 301. So I'm going to read a little bit it. to you and you probably will see some some images here so this is you, so always this a is favorite package number three is this private dinner one. for 10 guests so i'm going to read a little bit to you and you probably will see or in your some, home some images here so this is you, so always this a is favorite package, package number three on private dinner one so i'm going to read a little bit to you and you probably will see or in your home some images here so this is always a favorite package number three on private dinner one so i'm going to read a little bit to you and you probably will see or in your some, some home images designing this is always a favorite package number three on private dinner one. Decades, I'm going to read a little bit to you, and you probably will see more in your home images designing this is always a favorite package number three on private dinner one. Decades, I'm going to read a little bit to you, and you probably will. Right quick, because obviously tonight it's going to be completely different than it's been in the past. First of all, I want to tell y'all. <clears throat> that my standard line of is if I have a, a, an item tied between two people, I'll open it back up between those two. Tonight, that doesn't count, okay? We're just gonna be going bid by bid. I'm gonna be watching the bids here on the screen as we go, and then we will end up with a high bidder. Now, folks, I wanna emphasize this to you. There's gonna be about a 10 second delay from the time, from what you're looking at to what you're seeing on your phone or your computer or whatever. So we are going to allow for that time so y'all can, so y'all can bid, okay? Because if I cut it off, then it's gonna be 10 seconds before it's actually through. So if y'all will work with me on that, that will help a whole lot. The next thing, is all the items that are numbered a 300 item. In your brochure, everything shows as a silent auction item. Not the case here. When we get to number 301 that Francisco just described to you, we're starting the live auction right there and we'll go from 301 to 310. So we've never done this before. And obviously after 31 years, this is a whole new ball game for me. <laughs> so with that in mind, we're gonna start and see how it works out. So y'all all get ready, get off the couch, get out of the bathroom, and then we'll get started. Okay. Item number one, number 301, the steak dinner, okay? I've got $500 to bid, 500, now five and a half, $500 bill to buy, I'm gonna get five and a half, I've got 450 bid, now 500, four and a half, five, I've got 750 bid, now 800, seven and a half to bid, now 800, seven and a half to bid to buy, I'm gonna give anybody, give anybody, give anybody, give 800, I've got 750 bid, now 800, seven and a half to bid, now eight, 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 anybody, give anybody, give anybody, give 800, 800, 800, I've got 750 bid, now 800, Seven and a half to be now eight hundred. Seven and a half to be to buy. I'm gonna give anybody give anybody give anybody give eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Y'all look at the steak dinner now. Eight hundred. I've got seven fifty bid. I need eight hundred dollars. Seven and a half to be now eight hundred. Seven and a half to be to buy. I'm gonna give eight hundred. Seven and a half to be to buy. I'm gonna give eight 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 hundred. Eight hundred. I've got eight fifty. Now nine hundred. Eight and a half to be now nine hundred. Eight and a half to bid, now nine. What do you name? What do you name? What do you name? I've got eight and a half to bid, now nine hundred. Eight and a half to buy, I'm gonna get nine. Eight and a half to buy, I'm gonna get nine. Eight and a half to buy, I'm gonna get nine. What do you name? What do you nine hundred? Make sure you're bid now. I've got nine and a half. Need a thousand dollars. 
Nine and a half to buy somebody get thousand. Nine and a half to bid to buy somebody get thousand. Nine and a half to bid to buy somebody get thousand. Somebody get thousand. Somebody get thousand. Somebody get thousand dollars. I've got a thousand fifty. Now eleven hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy somebody eleven. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy somebody eleven. 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 Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Thousand and fifties to bid, folks. Eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred is what we're looking for. Eleven hundred. I've got a thousand and fifty bid. Now eleven hundred. Thousand and fifty bid now, eleven, 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 eleven hundred, eleven hundred, eleven hundred. I've got fifteen hundred bid now, sixteen hundred. Here we go, sixteen hundred. I've got fifteen hundred bid now, sixteen, fifteen hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get sixteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get sixteen, but you get sixteen, but you get sixteen, but you get sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred here, sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred now, seventeen. I've got sixteen to bid now, seventeen hundred, sixteen to bid to buy. I'm gonna get seventeen, but you get seventeen, but you get seventeen, but you get seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred. 1700, 1700. I've got 1600 bid now. 1700, folks. $1,600 bill to buy. I'm going to get 1700. I'm going to give you a minute. 17. I've got 2000 bid. Now 2100. 2000 a bid. Now 21. $2,000 bill to buy. I'm going to get 21. 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 100. 2000 a bid. Now 21. $2,000 bill to buy. I'm going to get 21. $2,000 bill to buy. I'm going to get 21. I'm going to get 21. 2100. 2100. 2100. I've got 2000 bid. 2100. Here we go. 2100. 2100. 2100. $2,000 bid now. 2100. Are you done? I've got 2000 bid and now 2100. I'm going to give you a second. So for $2,000. All you. Well, Ross, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. So Ross <laughs> tells the story of when he was uh, that that time when he was a kid, thirteen years old, and and he recorded this guy named Jim Miller, not not the barbecue guy, but Jim Miller, who was an auctioneer. That at the end of the talk, uh, Ross tells the story of how Jim took out his his wallet and gave him a business card. And the business card was to an auctioneering school in Iowa. And he said, he said to Ross, this is where I went to school. So that at the age of 18, when Ross graduated from Kennedy High School, he went straight to that school to become an auctioneer. So there you go. This is part of Ross's training. All right, now we move to package 302. So let me read a little bit to you. Package 302, yes. Melissa's gonna come and help you. Okay, so Melissa, you're gonna come and help me. So, I'm just gonna... so you, why don't you step in? Hi guys, it's me again. So we've gotten a couple of phone calls about people trying to figure out how to get to the live auction. And so I'm just gonna tell you, you're gonna go to the browse items and then up at the top, it's all items, entertainment, live auction. And you're gonna go to that. And that's where you're gonna see all the live auction items and you could bid through there and follow along. But that's where they're at. And they start at 302, 303. So there you go, happy bidding. Good luck with everything. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, all right. Uh, so I'm hoping that everybody can get to this. Uh, so thank you, Melissa, for the instructions. Okay, so if you have questions, you know, call Melissa. So Melissa's got a team over in the offices. They're fielding calls and we're trying to respond as best as we can to this. So package 302. So this is, this is really a gorgeous place. This is, this is a place in Asheville, North Carolina. And so some of you may remember from American history, the Vanderbilt. So the Vanderbilts were like very, very wealthy, you know, captains of industry late in the 19th century and then early into the 20th century. It's, it's the family that Anderson Cooper comes from. So you may know that Anderson Cooper's mother was Gloria Vanderbilt. So she came from a lot of money. And so Gloria had like a, an uncle, a tío or somebody was, whose name was George. So George Vanderbilt, who was a philanthropist and an intellectual in his own way, a botanist, et cetera. 
he had this Asheville, North Carolina chateau built. And so it's got beautiful gardens. It's this gorgeous, romantic place in Asheville, North Carolina. And so we're auctioning off this. So this is, this is Asheville, which in and of itself is a beautiful place, historic place with a lot of cultural opportunities. So enjoy Asheville with its many microbreweries, art galleries, an array of culinary choices, and of course, the incredible Biltmore House and Estate, which you can enjoy if you get this. So the estate was completed in 1895. It's a 250 room French chateau built by George Vanderbilt, as I said, and is an amazing place and an architectural marvel. The acres of gorgeous gardens and grounds were designed by landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted, who designed Central Park in New York City, by the way. So if you, if you get this, you can explore the gardens, the grounds, all that is an absolute must. So whether you enjoy hiking or a day at the spa, gallery hopping or pub crawling, visiting historic sites or strolling through the gardens at Biltmore House, this mountain community has so much to offer and enjoy. The package is for two people and includes three day, two night stay at the Hilton Asheville Biltmore Park Hotel. Admission to the Biltmore House and the gardens is included. Wine tasting and guided tour at the winery, a red wine and, cho and chocolate tasting and a $150 gift card for dinner at the dining room restaurant at the Inn on Biltmore. Trip can be booked and taken up to 18 months from today. Ross, the floor is yours. Thank you, Francisco. I had several nice things that I wanted to say about Tim Smith tonight, but I lost my notes. <laughs> but I love you, Tim, and we appreciate what you do. And you're doing a great job, Francisco, a great job. Hang in there, Tim, we may have to call you here in a little bit if we need some help. All right, <clears throat> item number 302, here we go. Thousand dollars and let's go. Thousand dollar bill to buy, anybody a thousand? I've got 1645. Let's go from there. 1645. Now 1675. 1675. I've got 2225. 2225 dollars. Now 23. I've got 3000 bid. $3,000 bid. I'm 3095. 3100. 3100. 3000 a bid. Now 3100. 3095. Now 3100. 3100. 3100. 3100. I've got 3000 bid. 3095 dollars is the bid. $3,095, $3,100, $3,095, now $3,100, $3,095, now $3,100, what do you get, $3,100, what do you get, $3,100, $3,100, $3,100, I've got $3,095, now $3,100, $3,095, now $3,100, $3,095, now $3,100, $3,095, now $3,100, $3,100, anybody, $3,100, I've got $3,095, $3,100. Got it. Yeah. My mistake. I'm at 2225. 2225 dollars is the bid. 2225. Now 22 and a half. 2225. Everybody get 22 and a half. 22 and a half. 2225 and now 22 and a half. 2225 and now 22 and a half. Everybody get 22 and a half. 22 and a half. 2250 dollars. I've got 2225. Need 2250 dollars. 2225 and now 2250, 2225 and now 2250, 2225 and now 2250, 2250, 2250, 2225 and now 2250. Are you done? I've got $2,225, need 2250. Gonna have a little lag here, folks. 22, 2370, 2370, 2370. Now we got 2515. 2515 is the bid. 2515, 2515, 2515, 2515. Now 2600, 2600, 
2515 and now 2600. 2515 to buy, I'm gonna get 2600. 2600, 2600. I've got 2515, folks. Gonna have a little lag here. 2515, need $2,600. Give you a minute. 2600, 2600, 2660, now 27. 26 and a half to buy, I'm gonna get 27. 2660 to buy, I'm gonna get 27, I'm gonna get 27, 27, 2805. I've got 2805, now 28 and a half. 2805 and now 28 and a half. 2805 and now 28 and a half, I'm gonna get 28 and a half. 28 and a half, 28 and a half, 28 and a half. I've got 2950. Now I've got $3,095. 3095. Now 3100. 3095 now 3100. 3095 now 31. But you get 31. But you get 3100. 3100. 3100. 3100. 3100. 3095 and now 3100. 3095 and now 3100. I'll give you just a minute. 3095. 3100. Anywhere. 3,100, 3,100, sold three thousand and ninety five dollars. Got too quiet in here. That's great. Hey, Ross, how about we sell that twice? How about we sell that twice? Twice, you say? I think we can do it. All right. That's a fine package, 311. On item 302, which was the trip to Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, let me say something about that, and then you come back. So it looks like we're going to sell that one twice. So we have one winner, but I wanted to say, Ross, that this is this is a trip donated by Jim and Francis McAllen, and the previous 301 is donated by Santa Fe Steakhouse and Cantina. Just wanted to say that. Okay, folks. Here's what we're going to do. Can you back up to 302? 302. The final bid was $3,095. Okay. The next high bid was $2,950. That was from Alyssa Luna. Here we go, Alyssa. If you would like to have this trip for $3,095, Go to item number, package number 311 and put in $3,095. This is just for Alyssa, folks, because she was the next highest bidder. She's at $2,950. If she will give $3,095, she can also have the trip. You need to go to package number 311 it's not in your catalog, but item 311, according to what we're doing here, and put in $3,095. We will give you just a minute to do that. $3,095, Alyssa. Let's call it good.
going to do it, folks. We'll move on to the next item. Okay. Thank you, Russ. And thank you, uh, it, to folks. All we'll of move on to the next item. Engage, whether you're bidding or not. You know, we know that you're engaged, and we appreciate that. So we move on to package 303. So this is this is actually a beautiful piece of art. And so I really want this piece. But you know, if anybody else wants it, by all means, you know, bid on it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read to you a description, then I'm gonna show it to you. This is a 25 by 58 inch oil painting that that will really feel right at home, you know, if you are in the valley. The painting depicts an expansive view of a rural Rio Grande Valley farm. And so you will see that shown is a white farm house with its utilitarian outbuildings surrounded by cultivated fields, citrus groves, dirt roads uh, that, that are lined with palm trees, real landscapes and all that. So this is a, a Gabriel Salazar, Gabriel Salazar piece. Salazar is an artist from Donna, Texas. He is self-taught and is award-winning. So he is a valley talent. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So Tony, if you can get that, check out this piece. So I, I've seen Gabriel Salazar pieces in, in law offices, in title companies right here in, in Edinburgh. We have one of these pieces. This is actually a, a, a donated piece by Alice East, but really Gabriel Salazar did this for this auction. It's a beautiful piece. 303. Item number 303, beautiful picture of the Rio Grande Valley. Miss Alice East, thank you very much for this. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thousand dollars and let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Thousand dollars, I've got 835. $835 now, eight and a half. 835 and a buy, I'm gonna give eight and a half. 835 and a buy, I'm gonna give eight and a half. 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 I've got 835. Now, eight and a half. I've got $835 bid. Now, eight and a half. 835 and a buy, I'm gonna give eight and a half. 835 and a buy, I'm gonna give eight and a half. 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 Eight and a half. I've got $835 bid on this. Need a thousand dollars for it. I've got 835. I need $1,000. 835 and a buy, I'm going to get 1,000. 835 and a buy, I'm going to get 1,000. 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 I've got 835. Need $1,000 for it. 835 and a buy, I'm now 1,000. 835. Now $1,000. 835. Got 900. I've got 900 now, nine and a half. $900 bill, I got nine and a half. I got $1,020, need $1,050. $1,020 to buy, I'm gonna get $1,050. I've got $1,020, need $1,050. $1,020 is the bid now, $1,050. $1,020 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get $1,050. $1,050, $1,050, $1,050. need $1,050. $1,020 is the bid, I need $1,050. $1,050, $1,020 bill to buy, I'm gonna get $1,050. $1,020, now 1050 1050 1050 I'm going to give you just a second. I've got a thousand. I've got 1205 now. 1205. Now 12 and a half. Going to have to pick up the pace a little bit, bud. <laughs> you can lag a little bit. You just can't lag that long. I've got twelve hundred and five dollars. I need twelve and a half. Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. I've got bid now. Twelve seventy five. Twelve and a half now. Twelve seventy five. Twelve fifty to bid now. Twelve seventy five. I'm gonna get seventy five. I'm gonna get seventy five. I've got twelve and a half to buy. I'm gonna get seventy five. Twelve and a half to bid to buy. I'm gonna get seventy five. I'm gonna get seventy five. I'm gonna get seventy five. 
12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 75. I've got 1250. I need 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. I'm going to get 1275. 1275. 1275. I've got 1250. Need 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. 12 and a half to buy, I'm going to get 1275. I'm going to get 1275. 1275, 1275, 1275. I'm going to give you just a minute. 1275, 1300. I've got 1275 bid now, 1300. 1275 and a buy, I'm going to get 13. I've got 1390 now, thank you. 1400, 1390 to buy, I'm going to get 1400. 1390 to buy, I'm going to get 14, 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 I'm going to get 1400. 1400, 1400. 1400 I've got 1390 I need $1,400, folks. $1,400 on this gorgeous, gorgeous painting. I've got 1390 bid. Now 1400 1390 is the bid. Now 1400 1390 to buy. I'm going to get 14 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 I'm going to get 1400 1400 1400 1400 1400 1390 to buy. I'm going to get 1400 I'm going to give you a second. I've got 1390 I need 1400 1400 got 1760 now we're going the right way 1760 i need 1800 1760 to buy i'm gonna give 1800 1800 1800 1760 is the bid now 1800 1760 to buy i'm gonna give 18 i'm gonna give 18 i'm gonna give 1800 1800 1800 1800 i've got 1760 bid i need 1800 dollars folks 1800 right now. I'll give you a second. 1800, 1760 to be in 18. 1760 to be in 18. I'm going to give 18. I'm going to give 18. I'm going to give 18. I've got 1800 bid. Now 1850. 1850. 1850. I've got 1800 bid. Now 18 and a half. 1800 dollar bid to buy. I'm going to give 18 and a half. 1800 bid to buy. I'm going to give 18 and a half. I've got 1945 and I'll take that. 1945, I need $2,000. 1945 is a bid now two. 1945 to buy, I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. I've got 1945, I need $2,000. 1945 is a bid now two. 1945 to buy, I'm gonna get two. 1945 to buy, I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get two, I'm gonna get 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. 1945 is a bid. I'll give you just a minute. 1945. Need $2,000. Got 2130 and I'll take it. Now 21 and a half. 21 and a half. 2130 now 21 and a half. 2130 to buy. I'm going to get 21 and a half. I'm going to get 21 and a half. I'm going to get 21 and a half. 21 and a half. 21 and a half. 21 and a half. I've got 2130. I need 2150. 2150. Anywhere out there, folks. 21 and a half. 2130 now. 21 and a half. 2130 to buy. I'm going to get 21 and a half. 2130 to buy. I'm going to get 21 and a half. I'm going to get 21 and a half. 21 and a half. 21 and a half. 21 and a half. I've got 2130. I need 21 and a half. Are you done? 2130 now. 21 and a half. Are you through? I'll give you just a second. I've got $2,130. I need $2,150. Give you just a minute to think about it. $2,315 is the bid now. Now $23.5. $23.5. $23.5. $23.5. $23.5. I've got 2315 2315 to buy, I'm going to get 23 and a half. 2315 to buy, I'm going to get 23 and a half. I'm going to get 23 and a half. 23 and a half. 23 and a half. 23 and a half. 2315 is a bid. Now 23 and a half. 23 and a half. 23 and a half. Anybody, I'll give you just a minute. Take you about 10 seconds to think about it. Got 2315. I need 23 and a half. 2500 is a bid. Now 27 and a half, 27 and a half, 2,500 to bid now, 27 and a half, 2,500 to buy, I'm gonna get 27 and a half, I'm gonna get 27 and a half, I'm gonna get 27 and a half, 27 and a half, 27 and a half. I've got $2,500 is the bid. 
I need 2750. 2750. Give you a second to think about it. 2500 is the bid. Now 27 and a half. 27 and a half. 27 and a half. I've got 2500 to buy. I'm going to get 2750. Give you just a minute. So for $2,500. Thank you, Michael Sander. We appreciate it. All right. So, yes, that, thank you for that. And, and, Ross, it, it looks like you're pretty good at this. Maybe I'll be off probation soon. <laughs> okay, package number 304. So I'm gonna read a little bit to you about this, but then I'm gonna have Melissa come up because I think Melissa and Lynn sort of imagined this, which really looks like, this looks like a very exciting kind of night. Like if you're thinking about where to take a team for community building, you know, and a nice meal, that sort of thing, look at package 304. This, this, is, this is a very cool event where you can have a good meal that is donated by the Texas National Bank and in partnership with the Museum of South Texas History. So this is, this is what this is. You gather a group, 25 people, mas o menos in all, for a unique and entertaining evening at the museum. You enjoy a steak dinner with all the trimmings and try to discover who done it. So this is kind of like a, 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 a murder mystery type of thing of a story that is concocted here. So should you wish to host this dinner somewhere else without the drama, that's okay too. It really is up to you how you want to do this, where you want to enjoy this great dinner party. So dinner is served on proper dinnerware, it's important. No paper plates for this occasion, this is upscale. Uh, you, you just need to provide seating, tables, table linens, and any decoration you wish. It's a special entertainment opportunity. Should you choose to host at the museum, the tables and chairs are on us. Menu, steaks right off the grill, mashed potatoes, asparagus, bread, dessert, water and tea included also. Package is good for one year. And we have to agree to the, to the time, you know, because we need to make sure that it's, it's, it's the right day for the museum and then we gear up for it. Uh, no holidays or Super Bowl weekend and <laughs> alcohol is not included, unfortunately, but you know, you can certainly bring your own booze. So I'm gonna have Melissa go into a little bit more drama on this, a little bit more depth and drama. So Melissa, if you would take the floor to explain what this is about, like, how'd you come up with this idea, Melissa? Go ahead. So, I would say that I think this came from one of our um, happy hours here at the museum. And Renee actually was the one who came up with uh, the murder mystery night at our happy hour. So, and it was such a, it was such a hit that we decided to, to run with it and, 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 and pair this up with a dinner. So we'll, we will come up with something in our exhibits um, some kind of historical storyline and you have to, but it won't be so historical that you can Google it and find the answer, but it, it's going to be fun and we'll come up with something and it'll have to do, you know, with our, our exhibits. So this is, I think this is one of our fun ones and this could be, yeah, a really great team building thing. Thank you, Melissa. So this is package 304. Ross. This sounds like fun. <laughs> Stand by, everybody.
Not leaving, are you? Not leaving, are you? Are we ready? All right, here we go. Item 304, murder mystery, 25 people here at the museum, steak dinner, or wherever you would like to have it. $1,000 and let's go. I need a $1,000 bid. $1,000 and let's go. $1,000 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 1,000. $1,000 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 1,000. Got a 1575 now. 1575, 1575 and a buy, I'm gonna get 1600. 1575 and a buy, I'm gonna get 16, I'm gonna get 16, I'm gonna get 1600. 1600, I've got 1575. I need $1,600. $1,600. 1600, I've got 1575 and now 1600. 1575 and a buy, I'm gonna get 1600. 1600, 1600. I'm gonna bag it up a little bit here, folks. Need $1,200 and let's go. $1,200 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 12. $1,200 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 12, I'm gonna get 12, I'm gonna get 1,200. $1,200 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 1,200. $1,200 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 12, I'm gonna get 12. Thousand dollars and let's go. Little bit of a lag here, but you can do it. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna get thousand. Thousand dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna get thousand. Thousand dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna get thousand. 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 I need a thousand dollars and let's go. Eight hundred. Let's try that. Eight hundred dollars and let's go. Eight hundred dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight. Eight hundred dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight. I'm gonna give eight. I'm gonna give eight. I'm gonna give eight hundred. Eight hundred dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight hundred. Eight hundred dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight hundred. Eight hundred dollar bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight. I'm gonna give eight. I'm gonna give eight hundred. Eight hundred. 800, 800, 800, 800 dollars and let's go. $800 bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight. $800 bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight. $800 bill to buy, I'm gonna give eight, I'm gonna give eight, I'm gonna give 800. 800, 800, 800, 800, 800, 800. Anybody, 800, $500 and let's go. $500 bill to buy, I'm gonna give five. And I'm doing all of this. Okay, hang on, we're hang on. We're trying to fix it. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. We're having a small technical difficulty. No call in bids. We're having a little technical difficulty, folks. We're going to get work through this. Y'all bear with us. You've done very well so far. This is our first time to do this. So we hope that you can just stick with us here for a little bit. Get up off the couch, go, go to the kitchen, pour yourself another drink, and come back. And I won't start till you get back. <clears throat> Expired. It says unavailable on call my phone. Okay. Can we do a number 312 on this one? Let's try three twelve. No, 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 no. We're gonna try to create another auction over here. Number three. Give me a second. No, no, no. We haven't created it yet. We haven't created it. Yeah. 
Hey, give us a second. We're trying to create another item. There's 2,600 is where it needs to be. All right, so I mean, I, we're going to try to. Uh, <laughs> okay, move in. I'll see you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time's up. And the question is, can we skip it? Well, uh, so the issue of creating a new one. Oh, you did? We should bid on this. So we should bid on this. Yeah. Let's go see the 305 and we'll come back to 304 at the end. It's okay. All right. So, so give me instructions on what we're going to do. Okay. okay. All right. So, you know, if we were live, we wouldn't have this issue, but, but we're having a technical glitch here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to fix this problem on 304. And so we appreciate you all from the community calling in, you know, you have an interest in this, our apologies. What we're going to do is we're going to move on to package 305 and on 304, come back to it. All right. So just be patient with us. Okay, this is 305. Hmm. This is, Ross, this is really the one I wanted, 305 for myself. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get this. This is, this is a gorgeous kind of experience and opportunity. This is a sapphire on South Padre Island. You can enjoy a sky-high luxury condo at the sapphire on South Padre Island. You're Three-day, two-night stay includes a spectacular view from a condo located on the 22nd floor. So imagine overseeing the Gulf of Mexico in it, all its splendor from the 22nd floor of the Sapphire. In this place, which I've been told from good authority, this is a fantastic place. Three bedrooms, three baths, free Wi-Fi. This would be a perfect place to gather with a family or reconnect with a group of friends. You can book a spa treatment at the Sapphire Luxury Spa. You can dine out in one of the many island restaurants or pick up some fresh seafood and create your own culinary creation in the full kitchen in this place. Whatever puts you in an island frame of mind, a stay at the Sapphire will only enhance that frame of mind. This is 305, package number 305. Fingers crossed that this one works. All right, fingers crossed. All right, Ross. Oh yeah. I heard, oh yeah, so I know things are fixing to happen. All right, folks, we're at 305. Down on Padre Island, Texas, Tim Smith. This is some of your territory, I believe. I've got fourteen hundred and sixty dollars. Now fifteen hundred. 
1460, now 1500, I got 1600, now 17. 16 to be to buy, I'm gonna get 17. 16 to be to buy, I'm gonna get 17, I'm gonna get 17, I'm gonna get 17. I've got 16 to bid, now 1700. $1,600 bill to buy, I'm gonna get 17. 16 to be to buy, I'm gonna get 17. 16 to be to buy, I'm gonna get 17, I'm gonna get 17, I'm gonna get 1700, 1700, 1700. I've got 1600 bid, I'll give you a minute. 1700, 1700, 1700. I've got 1600 to be a now 17, 16 to be a now 1700, 1600 dollar bill to buy. I'm going to get 17, I'm going to get 17, 1700, 1700, 1700, 1700. I've got 1600 bid now 1700, 1600. I've got 1780, need 1800 now. 1800, 1800, 1780s to bid. I need 1800 dollars. 1800. I got 1780 now, 18, 1780 to buy, I'm gonna give 18, 1780 to buy, I'm gonna give 18, I'm gonna give 18, I'm gonna give 1800, 1800, 1800, 1800, 1800. I've got 1780, 1780, I need $1,800. I'll give you a second. 1800 dollars. <throat> I've got 1780 now, 18. 1780 to buy, I'm gonna give 18. 1780 to buy, I'm gonna give 18. I'm gonna give 18. I'm gonna give 1800. 1800. 1800. 1800. 1800. I've got 1780. I need 1800 dollars. 1780 is a bit. Now 1800. I'm gonna give you just a minute for 1800 dollars. Got 1780. Need eighteen hundred dollars. Sell it for seventeen hundred and eighty dollars. Did we make that work? I believe we did. David, are we good on that? Okay. We're still going? Yeah. Nineteen. We've got nineteen hundred and sixty dollars. My apologies, I'm gonna to have to give y'all a little bit more time. Yeah. Nobody's fault here. Just gotta give you a little bit more time to bid, okay? I've got $1,960, I need 2,000. 1960 to bid now two. 1960 now two, 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 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 dollars. I've got $1,960, I need 2,000 dollars. I'm gonna give you a minute to do it. I've got 1960, I need 2,000 dollars. And I'll give you just a minute. Two thousand anywhere. I'm going to sell it for nineteen hundred and sixty dollars, Mr. Leo Virial. Thank you, sir. Back to you, Francisco. All right. Thank you, Ross. I I want to say that that is courtesy of Saul and Kelly Ortega. 
Kelly is one of our trustees at the, at the, at the Museum of South Texas History. So Kelly, thank you so much. And Saul, thank you so much for always being so supportive. Okay, so that was package 305. We're moving on to 306, unless I get instructions to go back to the other one. Not yet? Okay. All right. Are we ready to move on to 306? 306. All right, so this is another donation by Alice East. This is from the Creative Mind of Texas designer Jan Barboglio. A contemporary interpretation of the nativity is what this is. It is a work of art. It is fashioned from iron and handcrafted Mexico. This nativity is called Nacimiento Escultura. And it is one of only 250 sets crafted in the 2020 limited edition series. The sculptural figures represent Joseph, Mary, Jesus in a manger and three kings, each with a unique crown of different, of three different medals. It will be an artful addition to your home during the Christmas season or throughout the year. Once again, thank you to Alice East. This is number 306. To reiterate, number 305, Saul and Kelly Ortega, thank you so much. Number 304, we're coming back to 304. We are efforting on that. And number 303, another donation by Alice East. That was the Gabriel Salazar. 302, Jim and Francis McAllen. And that was the, uh, the North Carolina piece. And then 301 was a donation by Santa Fe Steakhouse and Cantina. All right, so Russ. We are at 306, and 306, once again, Nacimiento Escultura, Nativity Scene. Are we holding? Second. Okay. Oh, so somebody bought it? Someone's trying to steal my purchase. Ooh. This, this may be the mystery. This, this may be the, the uh, it's not a murder mystery. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a mystery of finding, it, it's the auction mystery. It's a, okay, so what, what are we doing here, uh, David? Okay, so I'm being told that there's something going on with the nativity scene that maybe. So somebody bought it for 1,080? Bidding, and Bidding has reopened. You had just reopened it. 1320, reopen. Okay, bidding reopens. So, it is active. Ross, the floor is yours. <clears throat> All right, folks. Okay, I've got $1,500 <clears throat> and $60 on this. 1560s a bit. Now 1600. I've got 1560. Now 1600. 1560 to buy. I'm going to get 1600. 1560s a bid. $1600 is what I'm looking for. 1600. 1560. Now 1600. 1560 to bid. Now 1600. 1600. 1600. 1600. I've got 1560 is the bid. I'll give you just a minute. I need $1600. 16. 16. 16. I've got 1560. I got 1800 now. That's the way to go. 1800. Now 1900. 1800 dollar bid now 19. 1800 dollar bid to buy. I'm going to get 19. I'm going to get 19. I'm going to get 1900. 1900. I've got 1800 bid now 19. 1800 dollar bid to buy. I'm going to get 19. I'm going to get 19. I'm going to get 1900. 1900. 1900. 1900. I've got 1800 bid now 1900 dollars. 1800 is the bid now 1900. 1900. I've got 2000 and 40 dollars. 2040, I need, I'm sorry, 2040, I need 2100. 2040 is the bid, now 2100. 2040, 21, I've got 2520 now. 2520, now 26. 2520, now 2600. 2520 to buy, I'm going to get 2600. 2600, 2600, 2600. I've got 2520, I need $2,600. 2600, 2600, 2520 to buy, I'm going to get 2600. I've got 2520. I need 2,600. 
I'll give you just a second to bid. 2,600, 2,600. Give you just another minute to bid. 25, 20 is the high bid. I need $2,600. Got 2760. Now 2800. 2760 to buy. I'm going to get 2800. 2760 to buy. I'm going to get 28. I'm going to get 28. I'm going to get 2800. 2800. 2800. 2800. 2800. 2760 is the high bid. 2800 is what I'm looking for, folks. 2800. I'll give you just a minute. 2800. 2800. 2800. 2760. Still at 2760. I'll give you just a minute. Need 2,800. Twenty seven sixty is a bit now, twenty eight hundred. Three thousand dollars. I've got three thousand now, thirty one. Three thousand dollar bill of my money, thirty one. Three thousand dollar bill of my money, thirty one. But you get thirty one. But you get thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred. Three thousand dollars a bit. Now thirty one. Three thousand dollar bill. Now thirty one. Three thousand dollar bill of my money, thirty one. But you get thirty one. But you get thirty one hundred. 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 Three thousand is the bid. Now thirty one hundred. I've got three thousand bid. Now thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred. I'll give you just a minute to bid. So about 10 seconds between us. I've got 3,000 bid, now 3,100. Sell it for $3,000. Diane Bartek, Diane, thank you. Big round of applause. All right, wow. That was that was exciting, uh, Ross. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, so we move on to package three o seven, and so you're gonna look at some of the images here of of three o seven. This is Marfa, Texas, and nestled inside this tiny little town of Marfa. I don't think Marfa even has two thousand people, but you know it's it's a small town, but has like huge kinds of artistic representations. So Marfa. The mysterious Marfa lights, the peace of the desert, and unexpected art all awaits the lucky winner of this package. Spend four days and three nights at the highly rated Adobe Blue Casita Airbnb in Marfa, Texas. I've heard of this Airbnb. Of this Airbnb, actually, it's it's very high end. The Airbnb sleeps four and is centrally located in Marfa. This package also includes four tickets to the world-renowned Chinati Foundation's art collection as well. You should know about the Chinati Foundation. This foundation and also the Judd Foundation are actually very, very important in the preservation of what's called minimalist art. And one of the best museums of that is there in Marfa. So it's actually a very consequential place, the, both the foundation and the, this Airbnb. So while you're in the neighborhood there in, in Marfa, you may want to add a visit to Big Bend National Park to your agenda. 
It's about two and a half hours from Marfa. Big Bend is an incredible experience if you haven't been there, uh, where you can enjoy hiking, floating on the Rio Grande and a wide sky full of bright lights. You know, it may be remote, kind of like the valley. It may seem remote to some, but this is a, a trip worth taking to West Texas. Thank you to Lalo and Casey Villarreal. Actually, this Airbnb, I think is very close to this family of Lalo and Casey. I, I've heard from them the story of this really high-end Airbnb. So Marfa, Texas, West Texas, contemporary art, minimalist art. Hmm. For art enthusiasts, this is actually a must-see. Ross, take it away. And let me add, Francisco, my wife and I just got back from there. Whoa. It's like they tell you in the magazines when you read an article about Marfa, Texas. It's a long way out there, but once you get there, you get it. Okay? It's hard to describe, but again, once you get there, you'll get it. Absolutely. So you need to you need to consider this. This is item 307. And we have got $900 here to go. I need $1,000. 900 to bid now, 1,000. 900 to bid now, 1,000. I'm gonna get 1,000, I'm gonna get 1,000, I'm gonna get 1,000, I'm gonna get 1,000. I got 1,000 bid. I've got 1,300 bid. Now 1,400. 1,400. I've got 1,800. 1,800 to bid. Now 19. $1,800 bid to buy. I'm gonna get 1,900. $1,800 bid to buy. I'm gonna get 19. I'm gonna get 19. I'm gonna get 1,900. I've got 1,800 bid. Now 1900, 1800 to bid. Now 19, 1800 dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get 19. I've got 1900, 2000 dollars. 1900 to bid. Now two, 1900 dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get two. What do you do? What do you do? I've got 1900 to bid. Now 2000, 1900 to bid. Now two, 1900 to bid. Now two, two, two. What do you get? 2000, 2000, 2000. I've got 1900 bid on the trip to Marfa. I need 2000 dollars. No, there's a little lag, and I'll give you just a second. I've got 2,000, 2,100, 2,000 to buy them now, 2,100, 2,000 dollar bill to buy them, I'm gonna get 21, but I get 21, but I get 2,100, 2,100, 2,100, 2,100, 2,100, 2,000 is the bid now, 2,100, 2,000 dollar bill to buy them, I'm gonna get 21, 2,000 to bid to buy them, I'm gonna get 21, 2,000 to bid to buy them, I'm gonna get 21, but I get 21, but I get 2,100, 2,100, 2,100, 2,100, I'll give you just a second. Got 2,000 bid. Need twenty one hundred dollars. Two thousands the bid, twenty one hundred. There it is. Now twenty two. 2100 to bid now 22 2100 to bid to buy I'm going to get 22 I'm going to get 22 I've got 2100 to bid now 22 2100 to buy I'm going to get 22 2100 to buy I'm going to get 2 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 2100 to bid now 22 2100 dollar bill to buy I'm going to get 22 22 22 22 I've got 22 thank you now 23 2200 to bid now 23 now 24 23 to buy, I'm gonna get 24. 23 to buy, I'm gonna get 24. 23 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 24. I'm gonna get 24. I've got 2300 standing. I need 2400 dollars. Let's keep going. 2400. I'll give you just a second. 2400. 2400. 2400. 2400. I've got 2300 bid. I need 2400 dollars. I'll give you just a minute. There it is. 2400. Now 25, 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25, I'm gonna get 25, I'm gonna get 25. I got 2,400. Now 25, 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25, I'm gonna get 25, I'm gonna get 25. I'm gonna get 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, 2,400 dollars a bid. Now 2,500 on the trip to Marfa, 2,500. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 25. 24 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 2,500. Are you done? I've got 2,400 bid. I need $2,500. I'll give you just a minute.
going to sell it $2,400. Mr. Saul Ortega, thank you, sir. Yay. A round of applause for the thousands of people that are here tonight. We have the other one just up and running. Oh, yeah? Are we? Yeah. Okay, so are we Are we ready to move into the mystery murder um, item? Okay, all right. So, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to number, what was this? Number 304, package number 304. And so now this is about the murder mystery. So it could be a little bit spooky. I don't want you to be spooked by what Ross is about to begin this at, but there's been this groundswell of interest and actually it's pretty impassioned to be interested. So this is package number 304. Package number 304, and just to reiterate a little bit, this is about the murder mystery and dinner for 25. And so you have you get you get a great meal, but more than that, this is really a community building, team building opportunity at the museum. All right, so Russ, the floor is yours. Thank you, Francisco. Item 304, we had a little glitch on a while ago. Obviously, all y'all were paying very, very close attention. So with that being said, I'm going to start the bidding at $6,700, and we're going to go from there. I've got $6,700, now $68. $6,700 bill to buy, I'm going to get $6,800. $6,700 I'm going to get $6,800. $6,700 to buy, I'm going to get $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,800. $6,
And so, so Greater State Bank, I think this is, this is, uh, who's from Greater State Bank? Uh, Robert McGurk. Robert McGurk, no, I, Yes, Robert McGurk, our board president, our champion. Thank you, Robert. Uh, HEB, thank you for always being there and for sponsoring the 50th anniversary. Idea Public Schools, Juan and Joanne Gama, thank you so much. Uh, Tom and Alicia Kennecke, thank you, Tom, for being such a good board member. Texas Regional Bank as well. And so, Mr. Baldry, thank you for, for raising, you know, to a premium um, table and also what you said when you you said to Lynn I think on a call you said because Lynn asked why are you giving more this year and you said that it just seemed like the right time you know to give more during this time of great transition and that sort of thing so thank you all for the premium tables and then thank you so much for everybody else who bought tables Manuel and Silvia Cantu Capital Farm Credit Karina Cardoza a new board member First Community Bank Frost Bank Lilia Garcia long time advisory member and also board member, Richard and Silvia Garza. Silvia, thank you so much. Our incoming chair next year. Rina Gonzalez is a new board member and I know she's all fired up about this auction. Hart Silva CPAs, Johnny and Monica Hernandez. Johnny also a new board member. Thank you, Johnny. Jones, Galligan, Key and Lozano. This is Anita. Thank you, Anita, for being such a terrific board member. Lee's Pharmacy, the Velas, thank you so much for always being there. Don and Sharon McGee. Sharon, you're, you're the best. Uh, many weight loss and, and, and Kramer Miller. Thank you, Kramer. You're not on the board anymore, but you continue to be generous with the board. And so these are the kind of former board members we like. The monitor, Stephen uh, Wingard and the monitor, thank you so much for your steadfast commitment. Willard, Willard and Ana Maria Moon, Ms. Mr. Moon, you've been there for a long time for the museum and we thank you. Patrick Moore, you won something earlier tonight, I think. And so thank you, Patrick, also for being a good new board member. Uh, Richard and Stephanie Moore, you know, Stephanie, you're an unbelievable fundraiser for the museum. Thank you so much. Uh, Robert and Sherry Moorhead, thank you. Margie uh, Pollock, Michael and Marisa Purneda. Michael's a board member. Thank you, Michael. Albert and Sony Rigo. Sony, you do so much for the museum, you know, in all your different capacities. So thank you. Real Bank, thank you so much, Real Bank. We have a few more who bought tables. I just want to call them out here uh, if I can get to my next page. All right, so here we go. Uh, Daniel Rios and, and Dolores Rios. Daniel Rios is one of our new board members. Thank you, Daniel. Sandra Orthopedic. Sandra's are all over the place in this auction tonight. So thank you. And, and thank you, Jennifer, also for being such a terrific board member. The Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Thank you, Lalo and Casey Villarreal. We've heard from Casey and the whole Marfa connection as well. Thank you. And Luis Aguirre, we saw you here today, Louis. So thank you, Louis, for being such a good board member. And thank you to everybody else who participated in this tonight. So we're moving on to package number one. 308. All right, so let me pick up my notes. Package number 308. So this is, uh, yes. Texas National Bank says we can sell the burger mystery dinner one more time. Whoa, and Texas National Bank. Texas National, so you, you have the instructions. Hold on because Okay, so word I'm getting is that Texas National Bank wants to sell yet another dinner, mystery dinner. So we may have two murders at the museum. All right, so Ross, I don't know how you're gonna deal with murders, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you handle that one. If you put those on, you won't be able to see. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to get to that. Yeah. 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 Can you can you pull? Some of the gas is killing. Yeah. Okay. So. so go. We're gonna do. under the same circumstance that we did the last time. Yes. Okay, folks, here's what we're gonna do. Texas National Bank has been kind enough to let us sell the murder mystery dinner one more time. So with that being said, if you will go to item or package number 313, you don't have it anywhere, but go to package 313 
And for $6,700, you can also have this package. So anyone that would like to do that right now, please feel free to. We would greatly appreciate it. $6,700. One more time. Y'all make this a group deal. You can't bring but 25 people to this, okay? If I were to buy this, I can't think of 25 people that I could invite. I'd have to invite some people twice. So if y'all want to go together, do that. And let's see what happens. I'll give you another minute or so. But for $6,700... Courtesy of Texas National Bank, we can make this work. Item number 304. I believe that's it. <sighs> okay. Then we will pass on that and we will go to the next one, Francisco. And by the way, he's doing a pretty good job tonight. Three oh eight. Okay, we're going to package three oh eight. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about 308. This is, uh, so I want you to separate the murder with 308. This is for one shooter. One shooter who will enjoy the South Texas brush country on a whitetail buck hunt during the 2020 or the 2021 season. The hunter is guaranteed a management buck, but the goal is to harvest a trophy buck. Miguel Guerra, a very able fellow, will work with you to help you achieve that goal. The hunt will be on the DV Guerra Ranch in Hidalgo County, and this is donated by Guerra Enterprises Inc. I want to tell you a little bit about this. This is this is actually a very a very consequential ranch. This ranch here was very involved in the 20th century in soil and water conservation in South Texas. But for this, this is about the hunt. So Ross, this is for one shooter. One shooter who will enjoy the South Texas brush on a white-tailed buck hunt. Floor is yours, Ross. Thank you, Francisco. You know, I must say something just dawned on me. With these bright lights and this panel, I could almost do the weather. <laughs> if I just had a marker. Couldn't I, Mr. Smith? All right. David has left this open while we were describing, while Francisco was describing it to you. So we're way up the line with this deal. <clears throat> and I'm at $2,400 right now. I need $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. I'm going to get $2,500. I've got $2,400 bid. Now $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. I'm going to get $25. I'm going to get $25. I've got $2,400 bid. Need $2,500. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. I've got $2,400 bid. I need $2,500. Y'all keep a bid out there. $2,400 to bid. Now $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I'm going to get $25. $2,400 bill to buy, I've got $2,500. Now $2,600. $2,500 to bid. Now $26. $2,500 bill to buy, I'm going to get $2,600. $2,500 bill to buy, I'm going to get $2,600. $2,600. $2,600. $2,600. I've got $2,500 bid. I need $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600, $2,600
now 2,600, 2,600. I got 2,500 to bid, now 26. $2,500 to bid, I'm gonna get 2,600. I've got 26, now 27. 2,600 to buy, I'm gonna get 2,700. 2,600 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 27. 2,600 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 27. 27, 27, 27. I've got 2,600 bid, I need $2,700. 2,700, 2,700. I've got 2,700, now 28. 2,700 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 2,800. 2,700 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 28. 2,700 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 28. 28, 2,800, 2,800, got 28. Now 29, $2,800 bid to buy, I'm gonna get 2,900. I've got 2,800 to bid, now 29. $2,800 bid to buy, I'm gonna get 29. $2,800 bid to buy, I'm gonna get 29. I'm gonna get 29, I'm gonna get 29. 2,900, 2,900, 2,900, 2,900. 2,800 is a bid, now I'll give you just a second. Twenty eight hundred to bid. I need $2,900. Give you just a second. Twenty nine hundred anywhere out there. Sell it for twenty eight hundred dollars. Amanda Saldana, thank you, Amanda. All right. Back to you, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. All right. We're moving right along. We're getting close to the end, though we still have a few items here. So we're we're moving. Oh, sorry. So 30309. 309, we said 308 was uh, donated by Guerra Enterprises. 309. Host a fun morning or afternoon sporting clay shoot for 20 friends or clients at Coyote Arms. This is in Edinburgh, Coyote Arms. Organize five four men or women teams and aim for fun. There are 15 different stations with two automatic machines at each station. There will be 50 clays per person. A lot of fun. Following the shooting, a hearty and tasty lunch slash dinner from Barbie Cutie Smokehouse will be ready to enjoy in the Palapa at Coyote Arms. This is donated by Coyote Arms and Barbie Cutie Smokehouse. This is a lot of interactive fun. You can get a workout, you can do team building, you know, you can go after somebody you've been wanting to go after, but in a fun way. So this is actually a lot of fun. So Ross, I think you're gonna do well with this one. You're gonna have fun with this one. This is package 309. Barbie cutie. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> I've got a thousand dollars bid on this. Now eleven hundred thousand dollar bid to buy them. Now eleven hundred thousand dollar bid to buy them. Now eleven 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 hundred eleven hundred eleven hundred eleven hundred. I've got a thousand bid. I need eleven hundred dollars. Thousand dollar bid to buy them. Now eleven hundred thousand dollar bid to buy them. But eleven hundred thousand dollar bid to buy them. But eleven 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 hundred eleven hundred eleven hundred eleven hundred. I'm in at a thousand dollars, folks. I need eleven hundred dollars here. Give you just a second. 1100. Here we go. 1100. Thousand dollar bid now. 1100. Thousand dollar bill to buy them now. 1100. Thousand dollar bill to buy them now. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 1100. 1100. 1100. 1100. 1100. 1100. 1100. 
thousand dollars and now eleven hundred. I got a thousand dollar bill now eleven hundred. Thousand dollar bill to buy them, but eleven hundred. Thousand dollar bill to buy them now eleven, 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 eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. I got a thousand bid now eleven hundred. Are you done? I'll give you just a second on the clay shoot. I've got a thousand dollars bid. Bear with me. I'm just practicing up here. You'll go to the next one. We're having a little technical difficulty, folks, on package and on the clay shoot. So bear with us here just a minute. Bear with us, folks. <clears throat> We're moving it over to 314. Sir? We're moving it to 314. To 314. Okay. Okay, folks. Here's the situation. On the clay chute, we need to go to item 314. 314. It's not on the, it's not on your, it's not listed on your phone. It's not in the catalog, but we need to go to 314 so we could create a new item and put this in there. That's probably more information than you ever wanted to know. So <clears throat> Do we still have a thousand dollars here? Yep. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. 
Yeah, some someone had bid a thousand dollars in that spot. The bidder. Yes. It was it? Luis. Yes. Bermudez. Yes. Bermudez. Thank you. Luis, if you could go ahead and bid again. A thousand and one dollar. And that way, that will kick it off. <laughs> if you're not in the bathroom or doing something else, if you could do that for us. Yep, Boom. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you, Luis. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Y'all are listening, and I appreciate that a whole lot. Y'all, some of the very few that will listen to me. <laughs> okay, I got $1,001. I need $1,100. $1,001, now $1,100. $1,001, now $1,100. $1,100, $1,100, $1,100. Got $1,001, I need $1,100. $1,001, now $1,100. $1,001, now $1,100. $1,100, $1,100, $1,100. Nina, I've got a thousand and one dollars. I need eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Give y'all just a minute to catch up. Eleven hundred. Luis is in at a thousand and one dollars. I need eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. There it is. I've got eleven hundred. Now twelve. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. I've got eleven hundred bid. Now twelve hundred. Eleven hundred to bid. Now twelve. Jaime's in at eleven hundred. Now twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. One more time, Luis. Twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. I'll give you just a second. Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Eleven hundred to bid now. Twelve hundred. Eleven hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Eleven hundred to bid to buy. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Eleven hundred to bid to buy. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve. I'm gonna get twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. I'll give you just a second. I've got eleven hundred bid. I need twelve hundred dollars to do this. Twelve hundred. Come on, Luis. <laughs> and it can't be eleven oh one now that he said that. Kelly says she's trying to bid on the item and she can't do it, so it's closed. Oh, I don't know. 314. 314. 314, yeah, is where they need to be. Little glitch here, folks. Hang on. Okay, we're at 1100. See, there's 1110. Hang on, folks. Who is that that's trying to bid, Melissa? Uh, so, Kelly. 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 Okay, we've got twelve hundred. I've got twelve hundred dollars now. Juan Garcia, is she, she going to bid now? Thirteen hundred. She's trying to. Yeah, Kelly wants to do it. Thirteen hundred. Okay. I've got Juan Garcia at twelve hundred. I need thirteen hundred. I'm waiting for Kelly. 
or take it to bed. 1,200, now 13. Come on, Kelly. 1,300, 1,200 to bed, now 13. Twelve hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get thirteen hundred. Twelve hundred bill to buy. I'm gonna get thirteen. Twelve hundred bill to buy. I'm gonna get thirteen. I'm gonna get thirteen. I'm gonna get thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. Twelve hundred to bid now. Thirteen. Twelve hundred dollar bill to buy. I'm gonna get thirteen hundred. You gonna try to bid for? Come on, Kelly. We're rooting for you, dear. I got twelve and a half now. Thirteen hundred. 12 and a half to buy, I'm gonna get 13. 12 and a half to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 13, I'm gonna get 13, I'm gonna get 1300. I've got 1250 bid, 1300. 1260. Saul Ortega, 1260. Now 1300. 1300. I've got 1260, now 1300. 1260 to bid to buy, I'm gonna get 1300. 1300, there it is. 1300 now 1400 1300 dollar bill to buy I'm gonna get 14 13 to bit of buy I'm gonna get 14 13 to bit of buy I'm gonna get 14 I got 13 10 and 1350 13 10 now 1350 13 10 now 1350 13 10 now 1350 we're gonna get 1350 I've got 13 10 and a 1350 1350 I've got I've got Kelly Ortega at 1300. But it's telling me that starting winner of time. Okay. But what's the rejected on the next one? I've got Duh. I'll catch on one of these days. Okay. Yeah, that's what I don't understand is why that, because I'm afraid it's going to stop again. Because they were at 1300. Okay. That being the case, we're going to have to sell this under the situation here for $1,300. Kelly Ortega, thank you. Thank you for calling in. We do appreciate that. How many more do we have? One more. Well, we have one more. Do we need to go back? Do we have to go back to one? No, we're caught up. That's right, it was that. Okay, let me get out of the way here. Okay, so thanks so much for hanging in there with us. This is uh, an imperfect kind of science, you know, this going auctioneering to a virtual platform and so you know, thank you so much for your patience and for just hanging in there with me. And so sorry for some of you who have been wanting to bid more, but on at least a couple occasions, you know, we've come up at least, you know, with the deficit on the technology and, but thank you nevertheless. Okay, package number 310. So this is, a, is actually an interesting way to end the, the live auction because in many ways, package 310, uh, I think you know, kind kind of is a is a is a book in to how this museum started. So when this museum was founded way back in 1964, when people began to gather, it was some community folks, yes, but it was Mrs. McAllen, Margaret H. McAllen, and it was Jimmy McAllen, and so then they brought some other folks together to really give birth to this idea that we now know as a museum of South Texas history, and it is what we're celebrating tonight, and it is what we are, I think, investing in tonight. And so package 310 is actually a donation by the McAllen Ranch. And so we thank the McAllens for their steadfast support for over, well over half a century here. So package 310, you will enjoy a wild hunt on the historic McAllen Ranch in Lynn, Texas. You won't find deer feeders here. 
These deer are raised 100% on natural forage found in their natural environment with little or no human contact. One hunter and a seasoned ranch employee guide will stalk deer through the brush using a variety of techniques like rattling antlers or sitting on a sendero. Your guide will provide a one-on-one -on -one hunting experience that will likely be unprecedented for many folks during the 2020 deer season. The hunter must be 16 years of age with a valid Texas hunting license. The hunt expires on January the 15th, 2021. So that is important to know. This is donated by the McAllen Ranch. Ross, I think you're gonna have fun with this one. This is package number 310310, our last item of the evening. <clears throat> David left it open again, and all of a sudden people are starting to bid, and that's a good thing. It's a great thing for the sake of this museum. And Jim and Francis McAllen, who donated this last item, I wanna thank you very much. I know what you've done for the museum, I certainly know what you've done for me, and I do appreciate it. So with that in mind, item number 310, the McAllen Ranch Buck Hunt. <clears throat> 2425. Right now, I'm at $2,425. <clears throat> and I need $2,500, and let's go. 2425 and now 2500. I got 2700. Now 2800. 2700 to buy. I'm going to get 2800. 2700 to buy. I'm going to get 28. 2700 to buy. I'm going to get 28. What do you get 28? 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 2700 is a bid. Now 2800. 2700 dollar bill to buy. I'm going to get 2800. 27 to bid to buy. I'm going to get 28. 27 to bid to buy. I'm going to get 28. 27 to bid to buy. I'm going to get 28. What do you get 28? What do you get 2800? 2800. 2800. I'll give you just a minute. 2800 is the bid. Got 2700. I need $2,800 on this hunt on the McAllen Ranch. 2800. 2800. 2800. I've got 2700 to bid now. 28. 2700 dollar bill to buy. I'm going to get 2800. 2700 to bid to buy. I'm going to get 28. 27 to bid to buy. I'm going to get 28. I'm going to get 28. 2800. I've got 2975. $3,000 and let's go. $29.75 and a buy, I'm gonna get $3,000. $29.75 and a buy, I'm gonna get three. $29.75, I'm gonna get three, I'm gonna get three, I'm gonna get three thousand. Three thousand, three thousand, three thousand. $29.75 is the bid. I need $3,000. $29.75 and now three. $29.75 and a buy, I'm gonna get three thousand. $29.75, I'm gonna get three, I'm gonna get three, I'm gonna get three thousand. Three thousand, three thousand. I'll give you just a second. $3,000. $29.75. Now $3,000. $29.75 and a buy. I'm going to get $3,000 anywhere. I'll give you just a minute to catch up. $29.75 is the bid. I need $3,000, folks. I'll give you just a second. I'm going to sell it for $2,975 in the McAllen Ranch Buck Hunt. You got that? You got it done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much. It's been a very, very interesting evening. I'm going to turn it back over to Francisco now. Tim Smith, we missed you, bud. We'll get you next time.
So this is, uh, this is what I think I know about not only the event tonight and I think everything that kind of surrounds us in this particular moment. Number one, I, I, I'm absolutely convinced that, that, uh, that Ross McKenzie is a hell of a talent. So a hand for Ross McKenzie. And so I also know that, that Lynn knows how to organize an event. So Lynn and Melissa, a big hand for you. And I also know that Casey Villarreal and the board committee that organized this Fandango are also unbelievably giving. So thank you very much to the board of trustees, a big hand for them. And then the other thing is this, that, uh, you know, we, we may be in a pandemic, but I think that, that we are not dispirited. I think that the, the spirit and the will of people in this community in South Texas is strong, maybe as strong as ever. I mean, maybe, maybe this is, you know, that during difficult times, you know, we come together and we're more creative and we're more generous and we're more giving. And I, I think that, that the, just the last, you know, few hours is real testament to that. So thank you so much to the community for coming together and for helping us raise, I mean, today I'm, I'm being given a note that we have raised today $149,799, which, which is, is pretty spectacular. So Board of Trustees, you are affirmed, you know, in your due diligence and your good, good work and your organizing and planning and, and just generosity. And then, and then also for doing, you know, stuff like this, because, you know, we see the strategy. Board members are saying, hey, I'm in here so that other people can, can bid and that sort of thing. And then other people, you know, buy the, uh, you know, whatever prizes we have. Uh, and so, you know, we see the kind of not only commitment, but also the, the action, the action that you're showing us that you're willing to take. So thank you for that. So I think that in the end, this is what this does. Number one, we can continue to be healthy as an organization. You know, we can continue to, to hold on to our buildings and do well with our buildings. Number two, we can continue to invest in our staff. You know, we have a talented staff, as I suggested to you. So thank you for, for helping us with that. And we have an unbelievable board. And so we all know that. And, and number three, I think we can continue to do some good programming. So thank you so much, you know, on behalf of the entire team. Ross, thank you so much. You are an unbelievable talent. And so thank you to everybody who participated in Fandango 2020. And we will see you next time. But before we sign off, Lynn, is there anything I'm missing that I need to say? Why don't you come up? You want to come up? Yes, I think that Lynn, who's kind of like the madrina of this whole thing, you know, she kind of holds us all together and gives instructions. And then we just, you know, do the work in support of Lynn. So Lynn, come on up. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for making this such a successful evening. We started off on an adventure, you know, nail biting adventure. How are we going to make this work? And everybody has come together and made it work, including you all. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Now, the lucky people that have won things, please remember that tomorrow between one and three, it just come on by the museum. If you want to give us a call at 383-6911, let us know you're coming. We'll get all your items packed up and towed it to your car for you. So um, we are, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And again, thank you every all the hosts that, that gathered people in their homes, those that hosted remotely, um, you know, our premium table buyers. We just couldn't do this without you. So thank you for making Fandango Masquerade de Oro a 